And welcome, 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 race fans, to the 12th round of the ninth season of the Bandit Racing League, presented as always on Full Send Racing Network, our channel here that is hosted by me, Marshall Crocker Jr. I uh, I often think I neglect to mention my name, and sometimes I wonder if uh, if people who have been here, even as long as five races, actually know what it is. So welcome to the Bandit Racing League coverage. I am Marshall Crocker Jr., your, your uh, host and your producer of these lovely broadcasts, and we will kind of introduce you to our uh, co-commentator and our other half and, and my better half here on the broadcast, Mr. Evan Wall, momentarily. But for now, we have a couple things we need to do before we get into your official race, your qualifying. And if you've been here with us the last couple weeks, you know what we have to do. So first of all, we're going to talk about our race sponsor. And tonight, as you saw here at Texas Motor Speedway, we are sponsored by Adventures with Purpose. And, you know, Adventures, Adventures with Purpose is a very different sponsor to, you know, anything we've really had this season. Um, they're a very different project. And let me just put the uh, logo back up here for you. But Adventures with Purpose is... Um, What's the best way to put it? It's kind of an initiative, uh, kind of a movement by a, a number of different people. And uh, it started out with the goal of environmental awareness. So they were um, using sonar technology and, uh, you know, all sorts of various devices to go and extract cars from lakes and things like that. And, you know, try to clean up the environment. Some of the bigger stuff that you can't just do, you know, walking along a beach. Um, and it turned into something very different. And it added on kind of a new layer, you know, semi-recently. Um, when they actually discovered that, uh, you know, some of the cars were um, essentially evidence, essentially you know, hints towards a uh, towards a past missing persons case. So um, it, it happened a couple of times. And, and as they looked around and um, continued to survey certain, well, places and, and certain, you know, bodies of water, they discovered some of these, you know, people that had unfortunately, you know, passed away in terrible accidents. But, you know, as they say in their videos, and they are, I got a YouTube channel with over a million subscribers. So here you go on screen, you can see their YouTube and um, on YouTube, Adventures with Purpose. The link is in the description below. So if you want to go check them out and understand more about what they do and watch some really entertaining content that, you know, is, is, is you know, somewhat, um, yeah, well, obviously unfortunate and, and tragic due to the, the circumstances, but it's also kind of, you know, a great, great closure for the families of, of those who are affected. And, you know, certainly if it were me, you know, it, I, I would, you know, get more solace in knowing what has happened to a loved one that has unfortunately um, gone missing through what they do so it's a really great cause and whether it's the environment or whether it's the um, support they're giving for families through their efforts um, it, it's just such a great thing that they do and they also have their website as well so if you want to go and check out the uh, adventures with purpose website it is adventureswithpurpose.com the link is in the description below and um, you can donate and that, that's such a crucial part of how they do things because unfortunately they, um, they they can't do what they do through just you know personal funds alone um, because you know, it's it's not like they're doing it for scrapping and stuff like that. You know, like when they when they do get vehicles, it's it's all a cycle. You know, they, they rely on donations very heavily to do what they do. So um, if you're interested in donating, go to the website and and uh, check out their cause. And then if you're interested in it and you want to support it, that's the place to go. They have a donate button at the top of the page. And um, I know that the way they do it, they have systems where you can, you know, get tax write offs and stuff like that. I won't get it into the nitty gritty, but um, it's a really great cause. And you should really check it out. And thank you to Matt Crockett for being the one to, you know, look into it, um, familiarize himself with what they do and he's been in contact with them but unfortunately we weren't able to set up an interview but uh so shout out to matt crockett who uh, we won't talk to because i know he says he's i'm uh, not feeling great tonight but uh yeah th thank you matt for for kind of making us aware of uh, of this great cause and um yeah if you want to go check him out it is in the description so adventureswithpurpose.com and yeah well thank you guys for such a great sponsor thank you to them for for sponsoring and i know they're very busy with some projects in the background so you know, we, we didn't want to disturb them too much, but I hope everything goes well on their front. And again, if you want to go check out some really great content, support their YouTube channel, feel free to go subscribe if you enjoy what they do. And yeah, feel free to donate again. And uh, and that's about all we can say. So we'll be sure to mention them more throughout the broadcast and you'll hear uh, all sorts about what they do. But it, it is a really great cause. And it's it's really cool that it's both, you know, for environmental protection and some uh, some really great stuff to do for, for families that, you know, could really use some news about, uh, about a loved one. So... There you go. Go check out what they do. Adventures with Purpose 100 at Texas Motor Speedway. And that is tonight's event. And, well, again, you guys that have been here a couple weeks now will know the way that we're doing things uh, more recently in the series. Well, after we do the uh, sponsor in the uh, beginning of the intro. And, again, we'll talk about them later on in the race. But now it is time for your driver profile. We've been doing these segments earlier on in the broadcast lately. That way we can, you know, get time to, to truly give a spotlight to that driver that, you know, rightfully deserves to have an opportunity every single week. So, well, it's uh, it's one half of the Zook brothers, and we already have a comment there in the uh, in the YouTube chat for Mr. Connor Zook is this week's driver profile. He, alongside brother Kale Zook, have well been in the series. I think a combined three or four seasons, so they know their way around, and they've actually been in a pretty bitter points rivalry this entire season. So we'll uh, see if one of them is on track, and we'll use them as the background footage. Unfortunately, not. They are parked in the pits as practice comes to a close. But uh, yeah, we we sat down with Connor Zook, or I did earlier today, to. Uh, 
to kind of get his take on the you know series as a whole, learn a bit more about his background, and then talk a little bit about what it's like racing your brother in such a competitive environment as the Bandit Racing League. So here is this week's Driver Profile. And in the 11th of our weekly driver profile segments here on the Full Send Racing Network coverage of the Bandit Racing League, this week we talked to Connor Zook, driver of the number 55 truck this season, and he's had some great performances under his belt. You've had a great year overall, Connor, in your debut season. So um, first of all, just in your background, you know, racing aside, do you want to kind of talk about some of your interests off track, you know, what you're doing for a living at the age of, you know, being in your mid-20s? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I live out in Arizona, and I, I work for a nonprofit out here, a legal nonprofit. So um, that's a lot of work. So... I have my hands full with that, so it's nice to get on high racing and and kind of you know relax and and get to race. And I'm pretty competitive, but it's also nice to kind of take away some stress. Um, other than that, um, you know, I I like Legos, specifically Star Wars. So uh, <laughs> that actually that that takes up a lot of my time. Interestingly enough, I know people call me a nerd, and I'm a 25 year old that has a shelf full of Legos. But uh, that's another way I kind of you know relax and get away from work. No, that's hey, that's really interesting. I can I can sympathize with that for some interest I had in the past, but uh, you know, in terms of hey, you talked about the competition, the the competitiveness there. Um, you you are in the series with your brother, Kale Zook, who's been here for a couple more seasons. Um, I know he's been here uh, at least one season. He was here when I got here to, to debut in the series. So you know, as as one of the two uh, you know familial pairings in the series, you just want to kind of talk about the rivalry there, talk about how you were introduced to the series, and and if it's if it's any different the experience here in the Bandit Racing League you've had compared to what you were expecting coming in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, me and Kel growing up, we're, I mean, we're very competitive. Uh, you know, I have three other brothers. So growing up, you know, it's almost a fight for everything. So, uh, you know, we had a good share of probably fist fights even growing up, which is always interesting. But, you know, as we, as we get older, we kind of move away from that. And he was in the league and, uh, you know, he, he's, he's had a love for racing since, you know, he was young. Um, you know, both of us have, and, and he really pushed for me to get on iRacing and, and try it out. And he, he kind of led me to the league because I had been watching since last year. And uh, here we are now. He's he's kind of been giving me pointers. He's taught me a lot, uh, which is really nice. I don't think I would have been able to get into the this league and, and, you know, perform the way I do without him actually teaching me a lot of stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that he's my brother, and I'm glad that he can and teach me everything that he's taught me thus far. Yeah, and, and speaking of teaching you what you know and, and your abilities now, I mean, you are, despite missing a couple races this season, a few less than some of those in championship contention, you are still, like, within the realm of, of being in that top 20 spot that would currently be required to make the playoffs. So, with only about a 30-point deficit, you got four races to go. I know we talked about your skill set, and it should be there on the graphics. So, is, is there any track that, you know, later on in this season, you feel confident enough you can maybe take your first uh, podium of your career here in the Bandit Racing League? Or do you think it's reasonable to suggest that you could make the playoffs with only four races to go? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a possibility. I think I think it would take a lot of luck. I mean, really, right now, I'm just aiming for top ten. That's that's my goal um, with my skill set. I, I I feel confident that I can get there, but that's really my goal. Um, so I, I think I might have to luck out to to get a podium spot, top three. Um, you know, there are a few tracks that I like more. I, I know I, I really like those flat one milers, um, like New Hampshire, the Milwaukee Mile. So you know, those are tracks that I feel confident at, but. Uh, I know New Hampshire is definitely an interesting one because in the trucks you have to shift down. So even that one, I'm not too sure. Uh, but right now the goal is just to aim for top 10. And if, if I do get in a podium, uh, I, I'd be very, very happy with that. Well, I, I certainly hope to see you there sometime soon. This year has been kind of the, the year of more variety and, and more parity than we've, I think, ever seen in the series. So, you know, there's always a chance you've had those top 10 performances this season. We've talked about you plenty. So all you, all you can do tonight at, uh, at Texas and going forward is just you know, put your best foot forward, do what you've done in the past. And yeah, you've, you've been rattling off consistency like crazy. So keep doing that. I, I'm, I'm excited to see if you can, you know, push the boundaries of that uh, top 20 there to make the playoffs. And if we do see you there, best of luck going forward. And yeah, just thanks for taking the time to do the interview with us. Yeah, thanks. Uh, of course, Marshall, it's nice to sit down with you guys and uh, I enjoy being in this league. It's a great time. Awesome. See you tonight. See you. And we're back, and yeah, well, it was such a great opportunity to take some time with yet another driver in the series, and uh, Connor's uh, such a really well-spoken guy as well. Um, I, I really enjoyed his interview, and uh, he's got a great mic. I forget who makes it, but he was saying about how little he spent on it and for how great it sounded, so I, uh, I always appreciate some mic quality from a 
you know, broadcasting perspective. So, yeah, it was so, so awesome to talk to him. And uh, he's, he's got some great support as of late. And he's had a really good rookie season as well in the in the, uh, in the 55 truck. So, well-deserved. Very happy to take the time there to, uh, to talk to him a little bit. And like I said to him in the interview, I'm sure we'll uh, talk to his brother, Kale, at some point, maybe before too long, and hear the other side of the, uh, of the coin. But, well, tonight, again, is the Adventures with Purpose 100 at Texas Motor Speedway. And again, I, I, if you've been here in the series a long time, you know what we do next. But we're still not ready to talk about the uh, race tonight yet. Now it is time for our race recap as qualifying kicks off and drivers begin to run their laps in preparation for tonight's event. And in our race recap, we recap last week's race at, anybody guess? It is most for for the final round of the Rogue Energy Triple Crown Challenge. And what a race it was. First of all, on the pole, Mr. Nick Nickerson in the two truck. He just... He's so consistent at it. He was leading in the points already in the Rogue Energy Triple Header, and, well, he's won four of the last five road course races in this series. And early on, Jonathan Platt having some issues, though he did run fastest in practice tonight, so he may turn his luck around, but he went in the wall early in the race. There was a nice move by Christopher Ferrara around Matt Crockett, or vice versa, I should say. And there was Curtis Yancey getting a little bit involved with Hunter Henry, gets into, them, gets into him down the inside of turn number three. That was kind of his passing zone all night. And then he finally gets the move done in the next corner. So Curtis Yancey, after an earlier slip up, and you see it again, making that same move down the inside of turn number three. Curtis Yancey was just on the charge from start to finish after an early mistake, trying to make his way back through the field. Here's the same battle between Brandon Jackson, Kevin Foster, and once again, Curtis Yancey after the pit cycles. And these two, who have a little bit of history, who've since kind of smoothed things out, continuing to battle, getting into each other again in turn three. That's just seemed to be the place to watch. This is only a lap after that original pass. But unfortunately, Brandon Jackson, after having some really great battles all throughout the race, finds himself in the uh, in the turn six inside wall and hooks it around, and that would be the end of his night. I know he's not a big road course fan, and that surely won't help. Curtis Yancey as well had a spin coming off turn number one, manages to keep it off the wall, though, and he would continue, and I believe he still came home with the top ten finish. Though here's Christopher Ferrara and Nolan Gross coming together. Nolan, well, getting slightly better of uh, that exchange. He managed to keep the car on track, or the truck, I should say. Christopher Ferrara was not so lucky. Now we see Peter Murphy there trying to go around the outside of Matt Crockett, and he would get it done. It was a beautiful move there. Did a great job trying to get by, and the first first and only pass we really saw there. You saw Christopher Hamilton a moment ago. He was a little ways back after making a mistake in the pits, and it would happen again, sliding into Peter Murphy there in the hairpin. Unfortunate luck for him, and he would only come home in seventh after a dominant second place run the entire rest of the race. But Nick Nickerson would come home for his second road course win of the season, third overall, and he would win the Rogue Energy triple header on points. He was already the leader in the championship, the mini championship going in, and the real one, for a fact. And he would come away with the win at Mosport. He claimed the North, and now he comes into tonight trying to make it back to back. And he's already the pole sitter for tonight's event, provisionally in qualifying. So there were your results. It was Nickerson, Guzik, Welch, Hillbrands, and Sawyer were your top five. And now as we will head into our other couple of segments, we can now give you a little bit of detail on the current uh, pecking order here in qualifying. So the top five as of right now are Nick Nickerson, Eddie Haggy, Trey Ellis, who makes his return tonight in the four truck, the first winner of tonight's, uh, well, of the season in general. And uh, Ricky Hart comes home in fourth with Hillbrands in fifth as far as qualifying order currently goes. So we will give you a little bit more detail as we go on. And only a couple minutes left, I believe, yes, two minutes left in qualifying. So... We will go through your full order in just a minute. We are almost done. But uh, first, let's give you the uh, championship situation, or the playoff outlook, I should say, after uh, last week's race at Mosport. Remember, every driver that wins a race this season is locked into the playoffs. And then the top 12 in points who do not have wins will also make it. So it is Nickerson, Guzik, Ellis, Lacey, Yancey, Aaron Smith, Ricky Hart Jr., and Brandon Jackson, the eight drivers who have won a race this season, and thus are all punched into the playoffs. And on the right side there in yellowy green... You see all the drivers who uh, are in on points in the top 12. And Nolan Gross, Bill Harkins, and Chris Ferrara are your drivers on the cutoff line. But now it is time to introduce a, uh, well, a guy who is very familiar to the series. A uh, longtime friend and, and somebody who used to, uh, to host these broadcasts himself. And has uh, since joined me as a part of, well, our Full Send Racing Network obligations. He still does the graphics for the series. Does so much. And he's been with us most of, if not all, the seasons. So here is Mr. Evan Wall, it's great to have you back, Evan. And uh, well, you know, it's I, I I was just saying before the race, you know, Texas Motor Speedway when you go to these mile and a half tracks is 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 one that is kind of just par for the course for Bandit. You know, it feels like an like a clean slate, like an empty painting. 
that just or an empty canvas that just has so much potential for a great race but the track itself is is really quite normal in the trucks it's decently easy to drive and it's uh it's certainly got high banking so passing opportunities are going to be a plenty if you think about a race like that where we're probably going to see some slicing and dicing the track is relatively easy and it's all about how you can battle in packs is there anybody that season that stands out to you as potentially having a really great night tonight at texas First of all, great to be here, Marshall. Always happy to come on the broadcast. It's so much fun on Wednesday nights. But really, to answer your question, I hate to do it. We do it every single time. But Nick Nickerson, he's just the man. He's number one in qualifying, and you know that he's good at this type of track. But there's a couple of other guys that are really good at this type of track. Eddie Haggy is up there. He qualified in second position, so he's a guy that I'm going to be keeping my eye on, as well as Trey Ellis, who qualified right behind him in third. But a couple of other guys that just spring to my mind, one of them is really Brett Guzik. I think of him as a big short track guy, but I also think of him as a mile and a half guy. He's just really good with consistency, hitting his marks, and a mile and a half, it's just a big track where you have to be consistent. You have to hit your marks. Brett Guzik is really good at that. Also, definitely keeping an eye on Kevin Foster. This is a hometown race from him. For him, he's from Texas. From what I've seen, he's good at the mile and a half tracks like this. He's especially good with conserving his tires, conserving fuel. So if that comes into play tonight, which I'm sure it will, I think Kevin Foster is going to have a good race here tonight at Texas. Yeah, I think he's a, he's a great pick to watch out for. And uh, yeah, especially considering he doesn't quite have a win yet this season, though he's come close many times. Tonight might be his chance. And yeah, hometown race, what better place to win than here in Texas? But now it is time for your driver, uh, well, your starting grid here for tonight's Adventures with Purpose 100 at Texas Motor Speedway. All graphics regarding the starting order are presented by Perfect Shine Auto Spa. And let's run you through. We got a lot of drivers, so we'll try to go quick. On the pole, Nick Nickerson leads Eddie Haggy down into turn one, both drivers sitting on the front row. Then it's Trey Ellis in third, Ricky Hart, Tony Hillbrands in fifth, Brett Guzik in sixth, Kevin Foster in seventh, Brandon Jackson in eighth, Cody Welch in ninth, and Ashley Molino makes her return tonight and rounds out the top ten. Yeah, so happy to see her back. Right behind her in 11th position is going to be Michael Ramos, followed by Curtis Yancey in 12th. 13th is going to be Jonathan Platt, followed by Jason Greenwell in 14th, Bill Harkins in 15th. And you got Jason Romy in 16th, followed by Kale Zook, David Lakey, Matt Crockett, and Christopher Ferrara in 20th position. After that, we got Connor Zook, tonight's driver, profile driver in 21st. The other Connor, Connor Sawyer in 22nd. Anthony Caetano starts in 23rd. Nolan Gross in 24th. Victor Weaver starts in the 25th position. Terry Condis on the outside of row number 13. He starts 26th. Then we got Hunter Henry starting 27th. Gary Wright running a great scheme tonight, running in 28th. Benny Hogan runs 29th. Coke Ellis in 30th. Then we got John Graham in 31st. Peter Murphy Jr. in 32nd. Qualified on the pole or on the front row for last week's race at Mostport. Tonight he qualifies at the back of the field in 32nd. Then Steve Ulrich in 33rd. And Alan Castle, our sponsor for Rogue Energy, our representative for that triple header that just finished. Rounds off tonight's grid. And it is Nick Nickerson in control of the field. So let's get your graphic up, get ready to go, and get set for tonight's... Well, I, I think it's going to be a great event tonight. I just get one of those feelings here at Texas. It's bringing him to the green, the two-truck, as he's done many times this season. Defending race winner, and now he takes the field the green. Nick Nickerson going across the line, and we are set for the 12th round of this Season 9 of the Bandit Racing League and the Adventures with Purpose 100. A good jump by Nick. And he is clear of Eddie Haggy down to turn number one. Yeah, huge jump by Nick, but that's what you've got to expect. He's got Eddie Haggy falling in right behind him, and so is Trey Ellis. But right th behind them is where you see it double wide, almost triple wide, going down into turn three right now. Further back, yeah, side by side. Tony Hillbrand's going side by side with Ricky Hart Jr. Oh, we've got one sideways. The 08's going to be sideways. We do. Jason Romy falling down the order in the 08 truck right on the very first lap. Has gone around, it would seem. We're going to have to get a replay and see what's gone wrong. Not a ton of damage, I'm noticing. You know, the, re the rear wing is already a little bit off uh, off kilter, but you know, it could, could have uh, certainly been a lot worse for how many uh, trucks were flying by him at the time. So let's go to your uh, full send racing network replay and see what went wrong there for him. Yeah, it looked like he was in a little bit of a pack racing with a couple of guys. He's right on the outside of the 55 there, and it looks like he just loses it off the corner. Good job from the 84 truck to get up out of the way able to miss that and good job from a lot of drivers really to get out of the way miss that wreck obviously unfortunate for the 08 truck but you ought to be able to come in get it fixed up and obviously still plenty of time left in this race yeah for sure there's no no uh, no shortage of time here tonight at texas you know about uh well approximately let's say you know 30 second laps something in the ballpark of that vicinity so 
you know, uh, you're running about 100. There's time. There's about an hour of time left. And, uh, yeah, as we've seen the last couple of weeks at these ovals, um, you know, talking about Chicago land and Michigan, both of which were great races, you know, nothing was really settled in the first couple laps. It was all about where you were at the end, and that kind of dictated how the rest of your race went. Um, very important, I actually want to mention, as we are, well, under caution, which unfortunately doesn't uh, really help towards the uh, towards the cause. But uh, the uh, well, tonight here for the uh, Adventures with Purpose 100, uh, we are going to be, well, not well, by we, uh, I mean the series. Uh, the series will be donating $1 to the cause of Ad Adventures with Purpose for each lap we run under green in tonight's race at Texas. And I know Kevin Foster, I remember the hometown boy here at Texas, the Houston, Texas native, will be donating $5 for each lap he leads in tonight's race to the awesome cause of Adventures with Purpose and all the uh, all the great things they do with, as part of their uh, as part of their efforts, you know, both environmental cleanup and uh, well, great work for um, you know helping helping some cases, helping find some people that may have gone missing. So you know, some really great stuff they do, and uh, and it, it's great to see that our drivers and the series itself, uh, that's on behalf of Bill Harkins, are are doing a great job to back them up and uh, and and donate. So again, if you want to donate, if you're interested in that, remember go to adventureswithpurpose.com or check out their YouTube page, both of which are linked in the description. And that'll give you all the details you need to, uh, well, yeah, if you want to donate or just find out more about what they do. And they were gracious enough to let us uh, represent them in tonight's race. And Matt Crockett, tonight's sponsor. So thank you again to them. Very quickly before we, uh, sorry, before we go to the uh, next restart, the lights on the pace truck are off. I do want to put up the uh, championship points before we go too far. I know often we can miss out on them for a little bit. So there we go. Presented by Perfect Shine Auto Spa. Your championship leader, Mr. Nick Nickerson, remains the leader of tonight's race. The only real movement in the top five was right behind him. Tony Hillbrands went by with Trey Ellis and Ricky Hart Jr. But besides that, the front of the field looks about the same after one lap. Kevin Foster, remember the hometown boy, he is in second in the points. Then Brett Guzik, Cody Welsh, Curtis Yancey are your top five. Aaron Smith, who is uh, for the second week in a row unable to make tonight's event. And then we got Ricky Hart Jr., Davey Hendricks, Mark Allen, Bivens, and Matt Crockett are your top five. We'll scroll down, scroll down a little bit. And uh, you can check through and pause to see your favorite driver and where they're currently sitting in the standings. And remember, this is the pre-playoff point, so don't uh, take in mind wins and stuff like that because drivers with wins are automatically set at 1,000 points. That's just how our system works. But that is just the overall points based on race results. And the pace truck is going to take the left-hander off onto pit road. Nick Nickerson, for the second time tonight, for the first green flag restart, takes the field to green here at Texas Motor Speedway. And we are off. Great jump from the two of Nick Nickerson. He is flying down to turn number one. Now Trey Ellis, though, going to look to the, right to the bottom of Eddie Haggy the first time down turn number one. And uh, Tony Hilbrandt's trying to go with him. He's going to go to the bottom side, get in the slipstream a little bit. And here at Texas, with new tires, you can run that bottom pretty consistently. So... We're starting to see the two wide rows start to stack up, and unlike many tracks in the corners, you can keep that going. Yeah, Eddie Haggy was doing a great job on that first little run. It wasn't much of a run, but he was doing a great job staying stuck down there on that outside line. He couldn't do that on this restart, though, and you've seen him get pushed back just a little bit, losing spots. Now he's got Brett Guzik under him. Brandon Jackson's poking his nose under there as well. So really, until that 97 can find a time to get down, he's going to have a little bit of trouble. Obviously, he's more comfortable on the bottom side than he is the top, but he, he's really out of the groove right now. Now he's got the 85 truck of Cody Welch under him. Jonathan Platt sticking his nose in there as well. Yeah, the bottom side here on, on fresher tires here at Texas is just going to be so dominant. You know, you got to get to the bottom and protect as soon as you possibly can. And well, now, unfortunately, Eddie's also got Ashley Molino again, making her debut tonight in the series, at least as far as season nine is concerned. She was a veteran of last season, won two races to close off season eight. And now tonight she makes her return in the 45 truck. Looking good, going to the bottom and uh, get a pretty consistently comfortably make that move. So now she's going to focus her efforts uh, you know, forward. Good friend Brandon Jackson sitting there on the outside line. She's going to go under him as well. So, yeah, the, uh, the, the message early in this race tonight, Evan, seems to be just don't go to the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what it seems like. But now let's take a look at Trey Ellis right now. He's sitting in second position, and obviously he's been itching to get back in this truck. We haven't seen him in a week or two. Not exactly sure where he's been, but he's doing a great job in his return so far. He's running down Nick Nickerson, or at least not letting him get away. I believe when this when this uh, restart first started, Nick got a really big jump, and he was out there a good ways. Nick Nickerson is seeming to to reel him in just a little bit, catching up to him, or Trey Ellis is seeming to reel him in, catch up to him, and he's doing a great job at that. He's definitely one that I'm going to be keeping an eye on the rest of the race. Yeah, as you should. Already a win on the season. Could make it two. Could become the third driver to do so this season. So, you know, Trey Ellis could be an undercover pick to do that, but he's off to a great start tonight. So do not count the four truck out. 
currently the biggest mover in the race before we uh, watch this battle to see if it continues. It will, but we're going to quickly jump back a moment to Jonathan Platt there, driver of the 43 truck. Is that kind of an up and down season? Back to the lead, Trey Ellis trying his move, but as I was about to say with Jonathan Platt, ran fastest in practice, trying to bounce back from a uh, well, unfortunate showing at Mosport last week after a wreck. And he's already up six spots from 13th to 7th early in tonight's event. And there goes Trey Ellis. Gets the move done. Nick Nickerson gets in the high groove a little bit too high. And new race leader, the four truck of Trey Ellis. Yeah, great job there, Brett Guzik. He's looking to follow him as well. Trey Ellis going to be your leader, though. Nick Nickerson, he might get stuck up on that outside lane. We'll have to see what this line of trucks do behind him. Unfortunately, the uh, 04 truck of Brett Guzik kind of blending in there. You see the number kind of stuck on the side of the livery, but he is that darker black and gray truck sitting there in the third position with Tony Hilbrand's truck tucked in right behind, and Nick was able to clear down to the bottom row, so looks like he do doesn't have to worry about getting trained by like Eddie Haggy did, and Eddie Haggy is now sitting back down in ninth, but Nick looking to make the move. We're going to go on board with the uh, number two truck and see what it looks like from the inside of one of these racing machines. He's looking down the in uh, outside of him, actually, I should say, going up to the top line. Coming off of turn number four is going to think about the move, potentially Almost clips the grass there, trying to get underneath him. Trey Ellis putting his truck in exactly the right spot to hold that position. And as we head through turn number one, he is going to get to the inside, so Nick Nickerson's going to try it. We'll see if he makes it work. They're now completely side-by-side -side off of two. The better run should go to the four, but Nick Nickerson looks comfortable to power out of that corner. And now we see Brett Guzik going side-by-side -side with Tony Hilbrands. Hilbrands to the bottom. Great battling early tonight at Texas. And as we come off of turn number four, new race leader once again, pole sitter Nick Nickerson. Yeah, you know what? I'm a big short track guy, and I've always thought of these mile and a half as boring racetracks, but this series has proved me wrong so many times we've been to tracks like this. It's just such great racing. We've got Nick Nickerson up front, Trey Ellis, Hillbrands, and you got to go back a little ways. We see the side-by-side -side action between the 04 of Brett Guzik and Ashley Molino down to his inside. Yeah, Ashley Molino looking for yet another spot. Qualified in 10th, said she wasn't feeling super confident about tonight's race at Texas, but she's already up five spots to fifth. Tucks in behind Ricky Hart Jr. And the way she's going, the way her momentum's been so far, you got to think she's going to make it another one. Going to look maybe to the outside, to the inside, down to turn number one. She is flying in a return to the series. The 45 truck, maybe trying to make it three race wins in a row that she's been here in the series. And there she goes. The 45 truck moves up to fourth as Tony Hillbrands is the next truck up ahead of her on track, trying to chase down Trey Ellis and Nick Nickerson for the top three spots. Yeah, and talking about guys with momentum, one guy that I really have my eye on is Cody Welch in that 85 truck. We really haven't talked about him a lot, but he really has his momentum going. He's moving his way up through the race, and obviously he's the, the truck just behind Ashley Molino in that 85, the, the Stars and Stripe truck, a great-looking Silverado there. But he is working his way up as well. He's got by a couple of guys, and he's going to be trying to follow Ashley Molino or work on her next, one or the other. Yeah, following up a uh, third-place performance last week at Mosport, a great job there at the road course. It's a very under, uh, uh, underrated kind of uh, element of his abilities. So Cody Welsh could make it two in a row tonight, but right now a great battle for second. Tony Hilbrand's doing everything he can to dice and weave around the back end, gets a push from the 45 truck. The 45 of Molino trying to get Tony Hilbrand's to get involved with Ellis, maybe trying to sneak her way through and behind. But right now, Hilbrand's will get the move done, and Molino is going to go with him. So here we go. Their top three has completely shifted over the course of five laps. Now Trey Ellis losing momentum. He's going to lose the spot to Cody Welch, Jonathan Platt. When you lose one spot tonight here at Texas, it seems like, Evan, you're, you're just done. That's about five more spots you're about to lose any minute. Yeah, these guys are so tight, and they're running so flat out, or at least really close to flat out, that it's, it's all about momentum and working your way up. You can get moving forward or you can get moving back and really these guys if they get stuck up in that outside groove they lose some momentum and they lose spots with that they really get freight trained by that inside line it's almost like a mini version of something that you would see at a super speedway like daytona or talladega something like that from second place all the way down to ninth in the span of about two six corners like that was nothing and you see on the top side unfortunately connor zook Tonight's profile driver currently in the last place in 34th after that wreck a moment ago with Jason Romy that brought out the first caution. He has now slipped back an entire lap, so might be a comeback drive tonight for him, but he will have the lucky dog to utilize to make his way back up onto the lead lap, and from there we'll see what he can do. But now the racing you can see at Texas starting to single file out a little bit. Everybody just kind of focusing on running the line they need to in order to somewhat conserve their tires. I heard from Matt Crockett before the race that the pit, the pit cycle was going to be approximately 27 to 30 laps on fuel, that should take us to about lap 33 tonight after that initial caution. So you can make it a few laps further if you really need to. But for the most part, I think we'll probably start seeing uh, well, drivers come in for their first green flag pit stops sooner rather than later. And as far as I know, you have two extra sets of tires in the pits, but three pit stops you need to make tonight on fuel. So guys are going to have some 
some rough tire stints, so the longer you can conserve your tires and you know keep that rubber up to uh, up to standard, I think it's going to be beneficial. So we'll see tonight, Evan, how long it takes before guys start thinking about maybe their uh, long-term tires over their short-term pace. Yeah, it's definitely, I'm sure it's something that some of these guys are already thinking about as we're seeing a couple of positions moving and shuffling, even though things are mostly single filed out. But yeah, it, it's something that I feel like guys are probably already thinking about. I'm sure some of these guys are not running as quick as they could, but that, that's one of the things that you'll never at. You'll never really know, even if you talk to him, oh, and a big move from the 99 of Brandon Jackson, just a little bit further back, getting by the 04 of Brett Guzik. A nice battle here. It's the 99 of Jackson on the inside of Brett Guzik. The 44 is looking to follow, and so is the 8 of Kevin Foster. But, yeah, what I was saying before, before that really caught my eye there in the background is that you never really know which one of these guys is saving, which one of these guys is going full out, who's doing something in the middle. That, that's one of the things that I love about racing. You'll just have to hang around to the end to, to see who's left and who is able to conserve their stuff while staying the fast the best. Well, one driver who's historically been very quick on the short runs but t tends to sometimes lack a little bit when it comes to tire conservation is Brandon Jackson, who is, well, kind of falling back right now. You know, he's down four spots from his initial qualifying spot of eight, so I almost wonder if maybe he has a little bit more of a fear of the tires here in Texas. Maybe he's just, you know, thinking it's better to conserve here, particularly at, at uh, tonight's race here at Texas, you know, for having that extra stint where you may not always need to uh, to take a set or to take a, a stint in the race where you don't have a fresh set of tires. And the fact that he does tonight, maybe Brandon's trying to make that earlier uh, rather than later. Maybe he's going to take that no tires stint at the very beginning in his very first pit stop. Maybe going to focus more on his uh, pace by the end of the race. But whatever it may be, short term, he is losing spots down five from the start of the race. Same with Kevin Foster, hometown number eight, sitting there in 12th down from seventh. So you know, for every lap he led tonight, he was going to donate to the cause. And, well, the way his strategy is going so far, it looks like those laps will be coming a little bit later in the event. Yeah, you know what? If, if it was me, I would probably be probably be doing the same thing. Just take it nice and smooth, these first first two runs, really, and then turn it on. Turn on the jets sort of toward the end. And I know Brandon Jackson, he's probably a little bit skittish as well around some of these drivers. It seems like the way that his luck is going, he ends up getting the bad side of the stick just about every single race he he ends up getting wrecked out so one thing he's probably fairly worried about the way that some of these guys are racing up front that, that's definitely got to be something crossing his mind as now we're looking back up front you can see the two of Nick Nickerson still leading your race but Ashley Molino is close behind him and Tony Hillbrand's right behind her yeah well we, well, we were looking away at those uh, battles further back with Brandon Jackson Brett Guzik actually did get the move done on uh, Tony Hillbrand's for, uh, for second position so now she is the driver in the catbird seat sitting in the 45 forward waiting for Nick Nickerson to potentially make a mistake or maybe she'll just force her own luck there get underneath him and find a way to uh, lead some laps herself and you know you got to think with how far she's moved through the field up eight spots from 10 I I would assume Ashley Molina is probably going for that you know take tires early strategy you know burn them up a little bit and then focus on that conservation a little bit later in the race so two different strategies it really does just depend on the way cautions fall but this could be the move right here just peek it a little bit to the inside down into turn number one Nick is going to close the door, but she's right on the back bumper there. And I think we've seen tonight so far, Evan, that as long as you can get right up to the back bumper of another driver and you're willing to risk your tires, moves aren't that hard to come by, it would seem, with those double lanes as a result of the high banking. Yeah, they're, they're not too hard to come by yet, but the thing is, once these tires wear down and once these drivers in front become a little bit more aggressive, things are going to change a little bit on that front right now. I feel like a lot of these drivers that are up front, they don't really want to risk it as much if somebody's trying to be that aggressive, make that move to the inside. They're just going to go ahead and let them do it. I, I don't necessarily want to say that Nick just let those two guys get past him or, or let Ashley and Tony get past him. But the thing is, I, I don't think he wants to really try and cause a caution. I don't think he wants to put himself in peril for those positions. So you know what? Letting them by, conserve your tires. Just, just ride it out a little bit. There's no reason to fight too hard this early. But speaking on what you said a little bit before about the way that cautions fall, that's one thing that is so unpredictable in this series. You never know what can happen. Because it's not like this race typically, or this series typically has a lot of cautions or they typically don't have cautions. It's really somewhere in the, in the middle. And there's nothing, there's really no way that you can predict it like a couple of seasons ago. Pretty much every single race went caution free and you basically knew that the race was probably going to go caution free whereas some of these races they tend to be caution filled but you, you really never know a lot of these drivers have been getting better and better 
and some of these races have been starting to look like they're going to go caution free. So when it comes to strategy and trying to guess what is going to happen, there there is no guessing. Absolutely. I, I think this season I, it would have been particularly tough as a driver to try to you know decide strategy in some of these races because you're right, it's been so inconsistent as to how many we get in a race. We had a couple short track races that were particularly bad for him, but now we've just been been it's been like one or two cautions each race it's been awesome and we've, got, we've gotten plenty of action through the last couple of weeks we've had some great races and tonight again you know if you're banking on you know recency bias and you're going to say okay if we get one or two cautions throughout the race i'm just going to commit to my strategy and assume it'll work and assume we won't have that other layer that could potentially put a strategy to rest but right now this battle between second third and fourth that being nickerson hillbrands welch and somewhat ricky hart jr is great so far and now we're seeing drivers come down pit road it's molino first then Nickerson, Hillbrands, Welch, Hart, Yancey, everybody's on pit road, save for Brett Guzik and those drivers who did pit, despite how many were packed into such a small uh, amount of space, appear to have all made it safely. Yeah, Trey Ellis came down a couple of laps ago, and so did Jonathan Platt. Those guys really started the charge. They were the first ones to come pit, and there you saw that big pack come in. But now it's going to be Brett Guzik and Brandon Jackson leading your pack up front. Kevin Foster as well with those, those guys that did not pit, but I'm assuming they'll be pitting this lap. Yeah, it looks like they are those guys coming in right now, all three of them. And everybody makes it on safely. Some real quick pit entries, actually, I'm noticing. Even, like, Brett, Kevin, and Brandon only got it woed up right there at the end, so you got to wonder, potentially, how close are these drivers coming to a potential um, pit road speeding penalty? But as of right now, I haven't seen any indication of that yet. So, so really, just really picture-perfect driving as of right now for guys getting on and off pit road. And we've seen... Over the course of the season, particularly what jumps to mind for me as a race at Homestead, just how important pit outs, pit ins and pit outs can be in terms of just making up time. And speaking of which, Ashley Mono, a big jump in the oh, pits the there. Oh, the 51's going to be sideways. That's Curtis Yancey. He's going through the infield grass there on the front stretch, losing the back end, keeps it under him, and keeps going. No caution as of yet. What in the world happened to Curtis Yancey? And how did he keep that truck under him? The 51 truck chugs along. He's going to lose a couple of spots. But holy cow, that was a bizarre occurrence. I just saw the 51 truck sideways. I don't know if he was possibly trying to come down pit road or what exactly was happening. It was right around pit entrance that the 51 went sideways. We're going to have to rewind there a little bit. So, yeah, we, we got to go back even a little bit further just to see what went wrong there. So this is coming off a of turn number four. He just got loose. The 51 truck and presumably older tires just loses the back end keeps his foot on the gas and just feathers the brake a little bit and as long as you can keep the back end under you you're good to keep going and basically treated this well tri oval like a like a not tri oval he just went straight through it and kept it going this has been the season of saves here in the bandit racing league but clearly we have had an anti-save because we have a second caution of the night and i'm seeing cody welch has gone off track he's the guy that's standing out to me and the caution does come out so let's see what would have brought out our second caution of the day also seeing alan castle having some trouble so Let's jump back and see what went wrong. Oh, the 85 of Cody Welsh just gets sandwiched there. The the uh, 32 truck there, and I believe that was the 33 of Alan Castle there. So one on the top, one on the bottom. The 85 tries to shoot the gap. Not sure if one of the uh, two trucks in front of him was coming down pit road, but uh, yeah, just the door just shuts on the 85 truck, trying to be as quick as possible because he was in the in the battle in contention there for the first spot after the pit cycles all worked out and unfortunately takes the uh, takes the gamble and it does not pay off tries to go down the inside and just like that yeah second caution of the race and relatively few drivers involved again i think the 85 truck probably okay just like that earlier incident with jason Romy. but if you uh, if you do indeed need to use a quick repair later in the race that's well not exactly beneficial to your race overall especially knowing a race like texas where incidents can happen at any moment with how high octane the uh, the, the pace is here in each, each and every battle on track, you know, if it were me, I would be a little bit more comfortable having that extra um, quick repair, you know, in my back pocket just in case. Yeah, you always want to have that quick repair because you you never know what can happen at a race like this. Obviously, Cody Welch was just trying to shoot that gap, you know, and it, I would have to assume that those two drivers, that driver to his inside and to his outside, didn't exactly know that there was a truck coming up the middle. That would just be my guess. Um, not Not really sure, but... Yeah, unfortunately, caused the caution, but I don't believe it was too much damage for any of those trucks, really. They should all be good to go, and it looks like it's going to be Ashley Molyneux right behind the pace truck right now that is 
leading Nick Nickerson, Tony Hillbrands, Jonathan Platt, and Ricky Hart Jr. in fifth position. Well, let's just take a moment while we have one underneath the caution brake while we wait for the pace trucks lights to turn off. We also want to mention, as we always do, your uh, merch, your potentially, uh, you know, Bandit League merch you could buy here on the Bandit Racing League, uh, well, the website. There's there's always more stuff going up there. We've been working on it over the last couple weeks. Um, this is the uh, old video we had last week, but uh, you may not see it here. We do have some new stuff. We've got some tank tops we've added, um, both for Full Send Racing Network and otherwise, just series stuff in general. Uh, we got some stuff for the Rogue Energy Triple Header. Um, we're, we're working on some Kevin Foster merchandise, another former two-time champion of the series, the all-time championships leader in the Bandit Racing League. So we got some new stuff. Check it out. The link is always going to be in the description there down below. So go check it out. If you want to support the series or if you want to just have some cool stuff you can show off to your friends and family and kind of get them involved in the series and, you know, show how serious both Bill, uh, everybody that runs it, Evan and I and the drivers are about this series and what we do every week. So feel free to check it out. Uh, the costs are very low, like... Genuinely, it's it's uh, it's as close as possible to be kept towards the uh, the cost of printing the T-shirts, and just so you guys can have something really cool to uh, to wear and um, in everyday life. And it's really good material. There's some definitely premium stuff on there. So go check it out. And uh, yeah, we try to keep the cost low, and anything that we do make off of it just goes straight back to the series. So if you want to support the Bandit Racing League and want to get yourself some cool stuff, go check it out. So it's in the description, the link there towards the uh, website in general, and then you just go to Bandit Merch. So. Um, I don't remember if I linked the Bandit merch link or I linked the website link in general. But regardless, you'll find it. Here you go. Here's some footage of the uh, the site. And uh, again, really cool stuff there. So feel free to go check it out. And uh, I was going to do the track preview, but uh, the lights in the pace truck are off. So we're getting ready to go in a moment. And we'll uh, we'll save that for potentially another caution. But it's kind of stuck up on me. But uh, Evan, we're 36 laps into this race. We're almost at halfway. And it feels like it's just sped by with how action-packed it's been so far. Yeah, this has been a great race, a lot of action, and it's gone by really fast, like you said, a lot faster than I expected, honestly. We've got that first round of stops down, should be two more rounds of pit stops, and the race will be over. And now it's Ashley Molino's turn to lead the field to green. Nick led the first two restarts, and now it'll be the 45 track, her first restart as the leader in the series in a very long time, but the 45 track will be leading Nick tony and jonathan your top four there she goes the 45 truck is off nick didn't get a great jump at all on older tires there and tony hillbrand's gonna shoot up the inside the 92 truck trying for second in the very first turn yeah side by side right now in the first turn the two and the 95 of hillbrand's jonathan platt's gonna be sitting right behind those guys watching waiting seeing which line is going to move faster going to jump down to the inside because most likely it will be that inside that moves faster we'll see how long nick nickerson can keep it up there on the outside we're fairly single file right now it's going to be nick nickerson side by side with platt and side by side a little ways further back we got trey ellis up on the outside and on his inside is going to be the aid of kevin foster another side by side battle it's curtis yancey and the 04 of brett guzik yeah, also Jason Greenwell and Eddie Haggy. There are just two wide rows everywhere. And Trey Ellis, as you mentioned, getting passed by the aid of Kevin Foster, the hometown driver himself from Houston, Texas, who moves into the uh, the top 10 spot there in 10th. But Tony Hillbrand's down the inside of the 45. We have a new race leader, and the 45 is getting jostled all around by the two truck. Nick is right on the back bumper, gets off, and makes sure that we, uh, we don't cause a third wreck of the night. But man, could have potentially been close just due to the, again, close quarters racing we're seeing here at Texas. Yeah, some great racing so far. A driver coming out of the pits, not exactly sure who that is, but side by side for a long way back. This is a great battle for the lead right here between really all three of these drivers. Molino is the one out front right now, but Hillbrands is battling hard up to the outside. Nick Nickerson down to the inside. Any of these drivers could come away with it in the next couple of laps. Looks like, looks like it's going to be Nickerson looking down to the inside. And with that momentum down there, he should be able to take the position away Side by side coming out of the turn and battling side by side. It looks like the two of Nickerson is going to be your new leader. An uncharacteristic move from Nick Nickerson, but it puts him in the lead. Typically, he doesn't get that gutsy and, and take risks that big in, in terms of uh, making moves and other drivers. So that was quite the pass. And you almost got to wonder with Ashley Molino showing potentially the threat of leading this race for as long as Nick has so far. Maybe he's, he's trying to pull out a different side, side of him, himself, you know, it's trying to get a little bit more aggressive, switching his tactics up, because as we've seen so far, Ashley Molino has not skipped a beat in a return to the series, but now it's Nickerson, Platt, Hart, Molino, and Hillbrand's your top five. Tony Hillbrand's, after leading for a couple of laps, gets shuffled out back to the end of the top five. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like Nickerson isn't a guy that makes risky moves often, 
But he is a guy that is smart about when he decides to take risky moves. So it's not often that he does, but when he does, I believe he feels like that's the right move to make. He's not just going to do it for no reason. And if I had to guess, I feel like Nick Nickerson was getting a little bit uncomfortable with how racy those guys were. We're 42 laps in. We're almost halfway through this race. But those guys were getting really aggressive. And you never know what can happen when guys get aggressive. I feel like Nick knew that it was going to cost his tires in the fort. Trey Ellis is going to be getting bumped. I believe he's going sideways on the front straightaway into the wall. He should be able to keep it going here. Yeah, the question is, can the cars, uh, the trucks behind him get by him? We see behind, there's a giant row on the bottom line. What has gone wrong for Trey Ellis? Still in the outside wall, just trying to let everybody by on the inside. But we talked about him earlier, Evan. You know, Trey was definitely in contention. He was up there up front. was having a great race for the, for the start of the event. So about halfway through, finds himself in the outside wall. And let's see what potentially happened to the four truck of Trey Ellis. Yeah, but while we look just real quick, what I was saying, I feel like Nick was getting a little bit worried with how much those guys were racing. He wanted to get out of there at the sake of his tires, try and stay up front and stay clean. And now we'll head to this replay, see if we can see what happened. It looks like he just barely got into the outside wall, and there wasn't really anywhere for the 27 of Ramos to go. Just got right into the back of him. Sent him right back up into the wall. Not, not too much that either of those drivers could do after the four drifted up, just tapped the wall a little bit, and nowhere for the for the guy behind him to go. Yeah, that was really all it was, just a slight miscalculation, found himself a little bit too high, and yeah, incredible. Michael Ramos was able to dodge, you know, get by him and, and dodge him without too much damage to the 27 truck. So back up to the front, Nickerson, Platt, Molino, Hillbrands, Guzik, now your top five, and yeah, that was uh, really unfortunate for Trey Ellis. Again, he was up, up in the top five there for that... Uh, really early to middle portion of the race and now he's going to find himself in the pits a lap down at minimum probably two is uh, yeah we see the leaders go by so now two laps down needs a quick repair just terrible luck for the four truck and that's the bandit racing league for you things can turn around so quick and you, you really got to savor every second you're up in the top five in tonight's race in texas because it has been crazy so far as we almost see a three wide down the back stretch yeah, a lot of great racing really happening all over the track right now. Looking at the 99 of Brandon Jackson, who's going to be on the outside of Brett Guzik. Ricky Hart Jr. Is, has a good view of this battle up in his windshield up in front of him, but really all these guys are watching the battle that's in front of them, which is for the lead. Nick Nickerson has it out there. He has the lead right now, but it's really close between all these four guys at any point in time. Any of them could just jump down to the inside, make a move. And we've talked about how relatively easy it is to really make a move down to somebody's inside. It's just going to use up your tires. I, I am surprised, honestly, in this stint that we've seen guys as successful as they have been on that bottom line with how old the tires would have been. We're probably about 18 laps into the tire cycle now, about halfway through the race in general. So, yeah, you know, everybody's starting to single file out a little bit. I think everybody's somewhat calmed down, and we're going to see a couple laps like this before the pit cycles, and maybe with the exception of, you know, potentially if a driver makes a mistake, they could lose a spot to somebody behind them. But... Yeah, you know, Brandon's going to go to the inside again this time on Ricky Hart Jr. He's going to look for the sixth spot, and Curtis Yancey in the 51 truck is going to go with him. But yeah, I mean, Evan, that looked relatively cut and dry there for a move on the inside. Didn't seem to have to lift and was comfortably able to avoid the outside wall and exit. So, you know, maybe tires potentially not as big of a uh, as big of an issue as they probably would have been expected to by most of the drivers and myself. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting tonight. You know, the, the banking is pretty high here at Texas, but certainly... You know, you can only run flat out for so long, and, and once that lap comes where, you know, hit, not hitting the outside wall is less uh, or is tougher than it seems, that may be when we start seeing some more cautions tonight. Yeah, for sure. That's something that we're definitely going to have to watch. But right now, the number two truck of Nick Nickerson is heading across the finish line there. You're watching the battle for second as they head across the finish line or just did. And now we're on lap 50 of 100. So, you know, let's tell the fans what they want to know. Who has had the fastest lap of today's race? I'll let you go ahead and put that on the ticker because that is obviously something that I'm interested in as well. It was Nick Nickerson in qualifying, but has he been able to keep that pace up during the race? Well, I'll give Marshall a little bit of time to pull that up on the ticker, but we'll have that pulled up so you who has the fastest lap of the race. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, I do not have a graphic that can actually display the uh, the fastest lap time. Or uh, I think we may potentially. Oh, we do. I should just shut up because that is not true at all. Here are your lap times. Unfortunately, I can't display just the top time. In the background, we got to talk about this battle for second. Hillbrands and Molino are just defending for their lives against uh, Jonathan Platt and Brett Guzik. So that is your top five at the moment. We'll keep an eye on that. 
But there are all of the best times for each driver in the race so far. So that's each driver's individual best time. And as uh, far as I can tell, the fastest lap of the race so far is occupied by Ricky Hart Jr. with a 29.21. So he is uh, kind of the gold standard for what you can do on a single lap. And unfortunately, we don't know whether that was with the draft. We don't know whether that was with a push. But whatever it may be, theoretically, Ricky Hart Jr., as he battles side by side with Kevin Foster, is hypothetically the fastest any truck in this field can go all night. Yeah, and talking about side-by-side -side battling, some great side-by-side -side battling for a couple of positions, but specifically up front, we've got a side-by-side -side battle for second position, Ashley Molino. Well, it's kind of fizzled out now, but Molino was side-by-side -side with Tony Hillbrands. Molino taking the position away now, but that side-by-side -side battling really causing Nick Nickerson to start to pull away up there up front. So we'll see if he can continue to do it or now that they've single filed back out, Molino and Hillbrands may be able to catch back up. That's something we'll have to keep our eye on. But another driver that was side by side no longer is now. It was Brandon Jackson and Brett Guzik. Those guys were racing really hard. Jackson even got into the back of Guzik just a little bit, came over the radio uh, apologizing because Gu Guzik got fairly sideways from that bump. A great job by him to save it. But it caused Brandon Jackson to be able to get by, and now both of those guys are passing Curtis Yancey. Guzik going to be in sixth. Brandon Jackson going to be in fifth, and they're working their way up. They're going to get by Jonathan Platt, who I think got shuffled aside by Brandon Jackson when he made the move on him that last time by in turn number two. So Platt will lose the spot to Guzik as well, move out of the top five, and now he could be right in, within the clutches of uh, the 64 of Ricky Hart Jr. Further back, a battle between Curtis Yancey and Kevin Foster, who are side-by-side. Great battles all throughout the top 10 right now, but Ricky Hart is the guy I would keep an eye on because with that fastest lap and the, the forward progress he's had all throughout this stint, we could see him up in the top three momentarily, but now it's actually Molino back to the point. The 45 truck gets the move done on Nick Nickerson, and she'll lead more laps tonight. Not sure how many she's led so far, but certainly quite a few. Maybe I can check on that, and uh, yeah, new race leader, 45 truck. Yeah, doing a great job to get that 45 truck up front. It's going to be Nick Nickerson in second place. Tony Hillbrand's behind her, Brandon Jackson and Brett Guzik. Fourth and fifth right now with Ricky Hart Jr. that you're looking at now in sixth. Behind him is going to be Jonathan Platt, Kevin Foster, Curtis Yancey, and Cody Welch rounding off your top ten. Just want to mention the biggest mover in tonight's race so far. That is, well, the fan favorite himself, Mr. Hunter Henry. He's up 13 spots from the start of the race. He started in 27th after qualifying, and the 94 truck has since moved up all the way to 14th, so making progress the 94 moving forward and uh yeah i mean if the pace he's going theoretically he'd uh, he'd be the race winner but there's a long way to go though hunter is doing exceedingly well in the points this season he's comfortably within the top 12 in the points other than the winners this season who make their way into the playoffs so a good points uh, night tonight which 14th out of 34 would be for hunter henry would certainly help facilitate his uh, entry into the playoffs or i believe the first time in his bandit racing league career yeah, a good, great job from him working his way up. But another driver that's really working his way up, he started in 20th. Right now he's 12th. It's Christopher Ferrara driving that 13 truck. And a, a little bit of a shameless plug here, but the Evanwall Media painted truck in the number 13. A little bit of a battle there as he's battling with the 84 of David Lakey and the 97. But yeah, the Evanwall Media painted truck, the National Guard number 13. If you need a truck painted, I've done... A couple of them, three of them running tonight. That 13 truck, as well as the 10 of Matt Crockett and the 99 of Brandon Jackson's. There you see the 43 of Platt heading down pit road. But yeah, Christopher Ferrara, he, he's trying to do as good in this race as he is in our Bandit Racing League Fantasy League. Right now he's 3-0. He's the only the only guy to be 3-0 in the Fantasy League. He, he's trying to bring that same energy to the race here tonight. And uh, speaking of the Bandit Trivia League, I would just like to say specifically to who was that? Uh, Mr. Hunter Henry, who I just talked about a moment ago, uh, who beat me in fantasy this week. So um, I am doing you a service by talking about you at all because you beat me in fantasy and uh, I'm very upset about it. But, you know, I got to put that stuff aside because sometimes there's stuff bigger than fantasy football. So props Hunter for making me two and one. And now he's in the pits as well as Matt Crockett. Victor Weaver. Uh, no, that is Gary Wright. Victor Weaver is on pit road, though. The 23 Valvoline truck is in the pits. And uh, yeah, we're starting to see our second green flag pit cycle of the night, though not the last, because as close as we've come with our two cautions so far, you can't make it to the end on 40 laps of fuel. So as Hillbrands and Ferrara come down, neither of which are those drivers. There we go. Hillbrands on pit road, Ferrara on pit road. The cycles are switching up. Everybody's pitting on different laps and might be another strategy race to the end, which historically at both Chicagoland and Michigan led to uh, led to like three wide at the line photo finishes. So 
I'm excited for the end tonight. Yeah, it, it ought to be a really fun race and really exciting. You know, talking about green flag pit stops and cautions, if there's going to be a caution, it most likely is going to be during these green flag pit stops. These are really when guys are, are making mistakes, doing things that they're not doing. Everybody practices running around the track. Not often do you practice getting in and off pit road. So this is this is one of those places that really shows the difference between drivers. But, yeah, while well, we got a little bit of time, going back to the – Going back to the fantasy league, Mrs. Crockett. That's who I'm playing this week. So I just, if you're watching this, I, I'm coming after you. Or Matt, if you're watching it, I know you're sponsoring. I, I love you, Matt, but unfortunately, I'm gonna have to come after your wife this week. I'm going to beat her in fantasy. I just gotta, just gotta let that be known. Derek, Derek Henry is gonna do it for me. I do believe. Hey, if there's somebody you had to put your uh, put your bets on, that is not a bad player to to uh, rely on. So. Oh, the, the Fantasy League's been so fun, but we got to focus on the racing right now because it is Brett Guzik leading the race tonight, looking for potentially win number two of the season. And, uh, well, it could have been many more than that based on the way the season's gone, but unfortunately some bad luck and some unfortunate finishes. A couple races have barred him from said honor, but here we go. Down pit road comes the 04 truck. Same with the hometown number eight, Cody Welch, who was in the back end a little bit, kind of fishtailing on his way down to pit road, but he does now pit, so the 85 truck on pit road, looking for his first win of the season. Benny Hogan going to come with him as well. And now Bill Harkins in the 11 truck, our very own owner of the series, is going to lead a lap here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. Yeah, beautiful looking. Very bright 11 truck for Bill Harkins. The Geezer Authentics Silverado. Of course, shout out to Geezer Authentics. We were talking about shirts in the chat just a little bit earlier. He's the guy who gets all that done. He does a lot of work to, to really get those shirts out. A big shout out to him and you know, Geezer Authentics, which which he runs and takes care of. And, of course, shout out to the Bandit Racing League website. Now Bill is going to be coming down pit road, so we'll see who comes up with the lead after him. It'll be Peter Murphy's going to come across the line. The 38 track will lead a lap going back to his traditional, well, one of my favorite schemes in the entire series. Uh, Peter Murphy qualified in second last week at Mosport. It was a great run for him, especially at a road course, but unfortunately, in terms of following it up, has not been quite so successful tonight. Um, but we continue on forward. Wait, what am I talking about? No, Peter, I think Peter was, uh, no, he's on the front row at Michigan. I'm a little bit confused, but uh, I've been giving him credit for it all night. So cre uh, credit to Peter for his uh, front row qualifying at our last race at Michigan, but uh, not last week. That was Christopher Hamilton on the outside of the front row, who is surprisingly not here tonight. So a couple notables in the series missing as Peter Murphy does come down pit road. Both Christopher Hamilton and Aaron Smith, who I'm sure could have potentially put up a very good fight tonight. Neither of them are here. So Kind of a surprise, but Tony Hillbrands of the 92 truck will lead the lap. Potentially his, no, not his first of the race. He's led plenty to this point. And he is your new race leader once again. Him and Nick Nickerson, well clear of those in the uh, in the rest of the top five. Ricky Hart about three and a half seconds back. And a problem for the 43 truck of Jonathan Blatt, he said over the radio, didn't get tires for some reason when he came down pit road. He's going to have to come down again. That's really going to... Really going to hurt his position there. Platt right now running in the ninth position. But, of course, that is going to change as he comes down pit road for a second time during this run. Actually, is he's going to opt to uh, to avoid a uh, pit road for the time being. So maybe just deciding that, you know, let's uh, focus on the longer run rather than the short term a little bit. And, uh, you know, maybe thinks that he can run better laps over the course of the stint than he would if he took new tires and went into the pits. Very good question in the chat there. What happened to Ashley? That is a good question. She's now lapped down in 24th as the uh, 45 truck, and uh, I honestly can't tell you why that is. I'm going to check the uh, pit strategy and see if maybe she made an extra pit stop or something like that to everybody else. But, yeah, the 45 truck noticeably outside of the top 10 now after leading a good portion of that uh, you know, that last stint, and I believe she was the race leader when we came down to that last green flag pit cycle. So something has gone wrong for the 45 truck and now puts a race in jeopardy in what could have potentially been a pretty simple win to this point. Yeah, not exactly sure what's happening there, but she is really battling with those cars trying to work her way back up. She's got the 97 of Eddie Haggy down to her inside, the 84 of Lakey up in front. She's really been battling with these guys for a couple of laps and doing, doing a great job to battle, trying to work her way back up, doing everything that she can. But right now she's at the back of that little pack. Looking back up a little bit further, though, this battle continues for the lead between Nick Nickerson and Tony Hillbrands. They're coming to 70 uh, laps through the event tonight. 30 laps, well, 31 laps to go as we cross this time. And the two in the 92, I feel like they've been consistently up there towards the top of the field, but they've had very different seasons so far. 
Nick Nickerson sitting on three wins so far this season. Only, uh, well, I think none for Tony Hilbert. It feels like he's had one. He's had some really great runs this season, but man, unfortunately, some of those races just similar to Brett Guzik not going the way he would have hoped at certain points throughout the season. Now he's going to look to the inside of Nick Nickerson. And tonight, this could potentially be Tony's chance to take away a really great chunk of points and really, well, definitively lock himself into the playoffs, though. With how far he is above the cut line, that could be a, a pretty safe assumption. But yeah, potentially ninth winner of the season in the 92 track would be a very deserving driver to get that honor. Yeah, it would not surprise me if the 92 truck found victory lane and became another winner on this season. But he, he's got fast guys right around him, and we still got another pit stop to make so... Who knows what can happen? He's got Dick Nickerson behind him, Ricky R. Jr. behind that, Brett Guzik, and Cody Welch behind that. And the 45 is going to be in the wall. Ashley Molino sideways on the back straightaway. And the block goes from bad to worse. Ashley Molino brings out the third caution of the night. That'll shake things up considerably. And after such a great start to the race, something going wrong in the pit cycles there goes from the lead to 24th. And now finds herself in the inside wall, bringing out the caution. Let's go to your full send racing replay and see what went wrong there. So there, oh, just goes to the inside of David Lakey, who I think bounces off the wall in the 84 truck. Just gets a little bit unsettled off the exit of turn two. Nothing the 45 could do about that. That was just wrong place, wrong time. And David Lakey sends around the former race leader. Not Again, not intentionally, just kind of a miscalculation there. But well, here at Texas, again, with how fast these trucks run around these high banks... One little mistake like that, and your race is done. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for Ashley. She had such a great run earlier, but, you know, that, that is what happens. Hopefully, she'll be able to get the truck fixed back up. I don't believe she should have used her quick repair yet, but unfortunately being showed is two laps down right now, so that's going to be a difficult one to come back from. But you know what? Hopefully, she can come join us next week. Not sure what her schedule is going to be like, but hopefully it'll be free because it's always fun to watch her race. A great driver. Obviously, she has a win here last season. Let's watch these guys coming down pit road. The 92 of Tony Hillbrands and Nick Nickerson are going to lead us down pit road. 64, 04, 85 following as well. The first truck to not opt to go down pit road is Eddie Haggy there in the 97, who won't lead the lap because of where Tony Hillbrands was on pit road, but... He will become your new effective leader, so we'll see if he does come down pit road next time or if the 97 and the 23, who, neither of whom pitted, as well as Benny Hogan and Bill Harkins. We're going to see if they go on a crazy pit strategy, go way off schedule, and uh, maybe try to do something a little bit alternative. But Nick Nickerson making his final stop of the race. The two-truck is off pit road and is uh, well, effectively the leader, aside from those four who did not pit. Then it's Ricky Hart, Kevin Foster moving up a couple spots there. Brandon Jackson, Tony Hilbrands loses quite a few spots in the pits, could just come down to how many tires he took. Then it's Brett Guzek, Cody Welch, Curtis Yancey, Christopher Ferrara, and Hunter Henry are your first 10 drivers off of pit road. The 83 of Jason Greenwell is going to be the driver. Your lucky dog this time. He was one lap down. Now getting his lap back, he'll be shown in 19th position at the moment. Yeah, a little bit of damage to the right side of that truck, but certainly not enough that I think it'll uh, well overall limit his uh, race going forward at least not to the point where he can take another quick repair if he so chooses but uh, well we, we didn't really get a chance to do it at this uh, point yet in the race but uh, I guess historically the way we end up doing them is that uh, Evan you often do these so uh, if you want to take over the track preview and uh, it's not really a track preview at this point kind of the track rundown but uh, if you want to tell the people a little bit about Texas Motor Speedway or at least the uh, 2009 legacy version we're running tonight yeah sure so this place opened up in 1996 but of course we're not running just texas motor speedway we're running the legacy texas motor speedway so the way that i racing does things they'll scan a track they'll have a track available when a new track comes out they will leave the old track available so this is the track that was circa 2009 on the i racing service then a new texas motor speedway became available we're running the old one though not the new one but this place was opened in 1996. Of course, it is a mile and a half speedway running 100 laps. That equates to 150 miles. Turns 1 and 2 are banked 20 degrees, while turns 3 and 4 are banked 24 degrees. So not too much of a difference. Not exactly very noticeable, but 3 and 4 are banked a little bit more. Quickest time on iRacing was August 27th of 2017. And that time was a 28 2 3. That's according to Dan Lisa. So not exactly sure how that stacks up 
to our times, yeah, that is fairly quicker than any time that we have here. So, um, not a, not exactly sure. Maybe different, different um, weather settings for one thing. But next week we'll be we will be at Las Vegas. So that ought to be a really fun race going to Las Vegas. We've got Phoenix after that, and then Auto Club Speedway, and that's going to close out our regular season. Yeah, that is correct. And then after that, we go to New Hampshire, Dover, Watkins Glen, and Pocono for the first round of the Bandit Racing League Season 9 playoffs, where all these drivers that have punched their ticket through either points or wins get to prove their merit, get to test themselves, and see which lucky, or, well, not lucky, but which talented eight drivers can make their way into the second round. But... Well, for now, we have a race to finish here at Texas, so it'll be Eddie Haggy and Victor Weaver on the front row, Nick Nickerson and Bill Harkins in row two. Nickerson merging back into the top three as a result of that uh, pit stop he just took, so he'll be back a few spots, but he'll have, uh, well, have fresher tires, as, as fresh as anybody in the field, certainly fresher than these guys in the top three. So it's Weaver, Haggy, and Harkins. Haggy's going to lead him to the field and be credited with the top spot. Well, and let's see. We've seen before, Evan, we can have some chaos with drivers on different tires starting off in the, these restarts. Yeah, you know what they say, cautions, breed cautions, but we'll see what happens. The pace truck dipping down onto pit road. It's going to be the 97 leading us to green and a big jump from Eddie Haggy, the 23 of Victor Weaver, maybe spinning his tires a little bit. Going to be stuck or sticking the two of Nick Nickerson behind him. He's going to jump down to the inside or really the middle lane right behind the 11 truck of Bill Harkins. Chaos all throughout the top 10. We're three wide a little ways further back. I see Tony Hillbrands was in the middle of a three wide for just a moment between himself and uh, Brett Guzik and Kevin Foster, though he gets out of that. Now he's to the top of Brett Guzik. A little ways further forward in the field, Nick Nickerson now tries to chase down Eddie Haggy, the 97 truck on older tires. Then it's Ricky Hart who's just got by. Brandon Jackson's gone by Bill Harkins. And then it's Bill Harkins and Victor Weaver, kind of a, a, kind of a wall being formed between those drivers and old tires. And those drivers on new tires behind them. A little ways further back as well. Cody Welcher on the outside of Curtis Yancey. Haven't talked about Yancey so much uh, tonight, but he has just been passed by the 85 truck. Now we'll settle in behind the 8 of Kevin Foster. See if he can get in behind the uh, hometown boy himself. The guy trying to lead the laps tonight for the, ca the uh, cause for uh, uh, Adventures with Purpose here tonight. So, you know, the 8 truck wants to get up to the front. And we'll see if the 51 is going to help him. Or if he's trying to, trying to go around him on the outside, which seems to be the more, you know, current possibility. So... He's going to make that move. But Brandon Jackson goes around the inside of Eddie Haggy, who is just bleeding spots now. Nick Mickerson back to the point, And those old tires in the 97 truck just coming back to haunt him. Yeah, Eddie Haggy was doing a great job of trying to hang in right there. And he was hanging in there until Brandon Jackson got on the inside of him. He's going to try and hang here in fourth position right now. But Brandon Jackson, that 99 truck is on fire. Action Jackson is moving his way up through the field right behind Ricky Hart Jr. right now. All throughout the field, we've kind of singled out, but there's still plenty of action going on. Brett Guzik is on the outside. Cody Welch and Bill Harkins, a really tight battle there. Whoa. Bill Harkins is going to go around. He turns him. He does turn him. Bill Harkins, the 11, goes around. Caution number four. And the series director, series coordinator, series founder finds himself in the inside wall. Let's see what went wrong there for the 11 truck. And, uh, yeah, you saw it coming off turn two, just a giant gaggle of cars. And all of a sudden, the bright green 11 truck shoots out of it. Kind of just gets too aggressive of a push coming off the corner from the 85 off of turn number two and uh, wasn't quite squared up as they came off the camber of the corner back onto the front or the back stretch. So just like that, that tiniest little bit of contact puts the 11 around. And uh, again, I'm sure nothing intentional. You know, I, I hadn't seen really anything between these two or really for the most part between anybody so far tonight. Just kind of a miscalculation. And Bill Harkins, who was, uh, you know, kind of out of his element in terms of tires yeah, and strategy overall, much older rubber than the guys around him. So. You had to expect the guys behind were going to try to come through, but uh, I'm sure he would have preferred it in a slightly different manner than that. Yeah, a really tough break for the 11 truck right there. Trying to work strategy out right now. He's going to be listed as the last driver on the lead lap, but here we see a couple of drivers pitting. The 99 truck of Brandon Jackson decides to stay out. So does the 04 of Brett Guzik. But Ricky Hart Jr. is going to come down pit road. And so does Eddie Haggy. So... Really interesting. I, I thought for sure Ricky had just pitted on that last cycle and he'd gone back quite a few spots. And him and Eddie Haggy are essentially going to be on the same pit strategy here. Kevin Foster, I think, just drove through pit road. All sorts of weird stuff going on here tonight. You know, sometimes here at these ovals, you know, when we have about 35 trucks to watch, 
guys just randomly dip in and out of spots. They find themselves randomly in the 20s. They somehow randomly end up in the top five. And it's very weird, and I don't know what has happened. But, uh, yeah, Ricky Hart, who we thought was on strategy, who we've seen in the past have weird, like, strategy miscues that put him back a whole bunch of spots. I'm wondering if that's what's happened again tonight, because now he finds himself well, quite a ways back there, relatively in 13th. And, uh, yeah, I thought it was just a pit strategy thing. I, I thought he was on the uh, usual strategy of pit there with about 25 to go, as most of the leaders just did. But pits again, so maybe just for new tires. Maybe didn't have fresh rubber on the truck and thinks that, uh, you know, coming from 13th on new rubber is better than being in the top five on old. So now it's strategy race, Evan, and uh, and I, I don't personally know what the best strategy is, and I don't think these drivers do either. Yeah, I don't think there's any way you can know what the best strategy is here at this point. And honestly, if you ask half of these guys, they're going to tell you that their strategy is the best. But you know what? That's the mindset that you have to have as a driver. And the only real way to know which strategy was the best is to wait until the end, 18 laps from now, and see who is hoisting the trophy figuratively in victory lane, you know? Even then, that may not be the best strategy. No, Nobody knows. It's really just a gamble, a big gamble. Every single race is a gamble to some extent, but... That's part of the fun. Nolan Gross in the 05 truck should be the lucky dog driver this time by, so he will get a lap back last week's driver profile driver and uh, will find himself back on the lead lap. So the young gun there in the 05 truck, who's had a great start to the season so far, gets another chance to prove himself, and currently sitting in 22nd, will become the final driver on the lead lap. And you know what? While the lights are still on on the pace car, we've talked about adventures with purpose plenty, but one thing that I really want to talk about is a uh, Matt Crockett's car. I, I specifically did that one, that car special for him. He reached out a little while ago and he asked if I could make some sort of vehicle or some sort of truck relating to adventures with purpose that he could run tonight. He's a big supporter of those guys. Obviously, he's the one sponsoring today and really just trying to encourage everybody to donate because they, they sort of run off of donations. So, yeah, I just kind of wanted to show this car off and as a thank you to Matt, it was one of the coolest cars that I ever made. Probably the coolest car that I have ever made for iRacing. I, I tried to make it underwater, tried to make there to be little hidden things in the water because that's what those guys do. They go, they dive, they find things in the water. You've heard about them. We've talked about it a couple times already. But I just wanted to bring up Adventures with Purpose one more time because those are some really cool guys. They do some great stuff, help people out in great ways. And I figured that was a good use of this caution flag. Absolutely, yeah. We, we should absolutely give a shout out again to Adventures with Purpose. Um, tonight's, you know, beneficiary or tonight's race sponsor, you know, it's just, it's so awesome to give credit to what they do because it, it's such a cool thing. That multifaceted um, element to it where it started out is just meant to be for environmental protection, you know, getting stuff like cars and, and old, uh, you know, rotting car parts out of lakes and stuff like that. That's not an easy everyday job and they're really getting their hands dirty doing the nitty gritty jobs there in terms of environmental protection and it turned into something totally different and again if you want to learn more about what they've done in the past and and what sort of awesome stuff that they do and and the great things they work on and, and you want to see it live and all of it's recorded on youtube so go check it out adventures with purpose the links are in the description thank you again to them and thank you to evan for making that awesome truck but green flag the 14 or the uh, the 10 of matt crockett in that truck is in the 14th position so we'll see if he gets involved at any point in the final 16 laps but it is the two of Nickerson, the 99 of Brandon Jackson, five combined wins in the top two spots, and they are being chased down by a fellow winner this season in Brett Guzik. Yeah, a lot of great guys up here at the front with 16 laps to go. Nick Nickerson has the lead there, but you got to keep an eye on all of these other guys directly behind them. Brandon Jackson could make that move at any point in time, and right now you're looking a little bit further back. We've got the 85 truck of Cody Welch. He's right behind Brett Guzik on the outside of the 92 of Hillbrands, who's looking to the inside. He's making a move down there. Hillbrands, the 92 truck, was a former race leader, was leading a bunch of laps alongside Nick Nickerson before this last caution set came out, and he is back up to third. Forward momentum continues, and we got three new winners in this, or potential new winners in this section. We got both Tony Hillbrands and Cody Welch and Jonathan Platt, so plenty of potential for a ninth winner of the season. But right now, Brandon Jackson, an already former winner this year, side-by-side -side with three-time winner Nick Nickerson up front. 14 laps to go, and we've got a new leader. It's the 99 of Brandon Jackson. But Nick Nickerson and Tony Hillbrands are right on his tails. We've got a whole pack of guys that could possibly win. Great battling all throughout the field. Brett Guzik is working his way up in part of that pack. He's looking down to the inside of Tony Hillbrands. 
He's trying to make the pass down there, riding along with Cody Welch right now, who's watching all of this action take place in front. He's going to be three wide going up the middle. He's got Nick Nickerson on his outside, Brett Guzik down on his inside. 13 laps to go. That could be four minutes if we go green to the end, or no, I was trying to say seven minutes, but something in that proximity. There is not much time left to go. It is go, go, go time. Brett Guzik down to the bottom, off a of turn number two, going to second position. Everybody's jostling around. Brendan Jackson up to the lead. Had led virtually no laps to this point in the race, but finds himself as the guy to beat this late in the event. Coming to 12 to go this time by now. Welch going to look to the inside on Hillbrands. He's the guy with the momentum right now. They'll keep an eye on Curtis Yancey and the hard-charging Jonathan Platt in behind. Yeah, I feel like we haven't talked too much about Curtis Yancey or Jonathan Platt, but those guys are really setting themselves up in a great position. They're, they're right there back in the, the spot where they can make something happen. They're trying to work their way up. Of course, nobody is in a better position than Brandon Jackson or Brett Guzik, though, and those guys are going to be side by side as they come down into the corner. Brett Guzik's up there on the outside, which is probably not the ideal line. The 99 getting loose off the corner. He's got the 85 of Cody Welch directly behind them, but side by side going into turn one, it's the 99 of Brandon Jackson, the 04 of Brett Guzik. Cody Welch. Oh, up into the wall. The 51, the 51's going to be sideways now. Jonathan Platt turning the 51. Yeah, two back-to-back -back wrecks kicking that off. The 51 slid up into the 92 of Hillbrands. Then the 51 gets turned by Platt. Just like that, as we've seen all night tonight at Texas. Things can go so well. The battle's going to be so awesome. But the second something goes out of line, everything turns into a caution. Uh, that's the uh, fifth of the night. Not too many overall. Curtis Yancey in the 51 trying to get back to the pits as quick as possible with a very misaligned race truck there in the 51. But just like that, two top contenders, three if Jonathan Platt is out, find themselves looking the wrong way. Yeah, really unfortunate for those guys. They were putting themselves in a really good spot, but just that's the product of hard racing. Things happen and I thought it was going to be a really good save there. It was a really good save there until a couple of those drivers came in from the back. And really, no, no blame to them. Nowhere that they could necessarily go. But yeah, it looks like the 51 coming down into the corner. Looks like he just drifts up into the 92 of Hillbrands. The 92 able to save it and does a great job of saving it. But Jonathan Platt in that Georgia Bulldogs truck. Platt comes through there. And he just gives the 51 a little bit of a tap because the 51, obviously, he had to slow up when he made that cont contact. He lost a lot of momentum. It is a great view watching everything happen up in front of you. Oh, look at the gap. I know she's two laps down, but look at the gap. Ashley Molino just shot there as Curtis Yancey was sliding to the inside. We got to get another replay of that very quickly. So let's, uh, let's go on board here with the 45 truck of Molino. She's watching this all happen in front of her. So much smoke, you can't tell what's happening. The 51's coming down, coming down, and manages to clear him. Nice piece of driving there. Just, yeah, went with her instincts, and uh, it worked out. Curtis Yancey was uh, just spiraling like a pirouette there as he came down the uh, came down the lane. And uh, I, I'm sure in real-world racing, you know, some of these crazy wrecks, luckily we can just laugh them off. Well, not laugh them off, but uh, we can just talk about them without any uh, questions because it is, of course, a simulator. But... Uh, Pretty violent wreck there. Christopher Ferrar in the 13, that awesome uh, awesome liver you did tonight, Evan, took unfortunately a big tumble and got all scuffed up there in the aftermath of that wreck. So, yeah, it looked like uh, fundamentally it was kind of the unsettling of the 92 truck by Curtis Yancey is what kicked off all the confusion. And in the process, the 43 truck got into the back and, uh, and spun the 51 truck. So, I mean, it, it didn't work out for Curtis Yancey. He is now out of the top 10, sitting in 24th, still on pit road. Same with Ashley Molino, John Graham, tonight's profile driver, Connor Zook. And uh, Peter Murphy as well is on pit road. No, that is uh, Terry Condis. There is Connor Zook in the 55. And Peter Murphy as well, currently sitting in his pit box. But back up to the front, it is Brett Guzik and Cody Welsh will be your front row. And then it's Jonathan Platt, who does survive the wreck. I want to look at the front of that truck and see how much damage he has, but... Uh, some, but very minimal. I don't know about you, Evan, but uh, I'd, I'd say he's definitely got enough of a track left to, with about seven or six laps to go, make a uh, make a charge at his first win of the season. Yeah, I would say he definitely has enough truck left, but one guy that we want to be sure to keep an eye on is the 99 of Brandon Jackson. He's going to be sitting in 15th position right now. I'm assuming he just came down pit road. Probably, most likely got new tires, topped it off on fuel. And I have a feeling that the 99 is going to be charting his way up through the field. I believe Tony Hillbrands possibly just came down pit road, too. He's sitting in 14th position 
right in front of Brandon Jackson. So this ought to be a fun little skirmish to the end. We've got eight laps to go right now. Yeah, we call him Action Jackson for a reason. we got to say that in every broadcast. It's for good reason because Brandon is just such a fun guy to watch. And he's gone with this very similar strategy a number of times. You know, take tires late and, uh, and just make a charge through at the end. It worked for him at Homestead. We'll see if it works for him tonight. Maybe gets his third win of the season at uh, at Texas. It seems something right up his old wheelhouse. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how the uh, finish goes. But six laps to go will be the count. When we take the green flag next time by, remember Brett Guzik is your race leader with Cody Welch on the outside of the front row. And it's Jonathan Platten on the inside of row two. To his outside, Michael Ramos out of nowhere, the 27 truck. Good to see him working his way up here. He's often good at these uh, mile and a half intermediates, just like Charlotte um, last season where he got a pull in the Xfinity Series in season eight. Then on row number three, we got Nick Nickerson alongside Ricky Hart Jr., the last two champions in the series. The two last year, the 64 the year before that. Plenty of talent in that row. Then David Lakey, Eddie Haggy in row number four. Benny Hogan and Hunter Henry in row number five. And then it's Kale Zook and Matt Crockett running again. That awesome number 10, Adventures with Purpose livery. And he'll round off the top 12. Then it's Hillbrands, Weaver, and Foster rounding off the top 15. We'll see if Kevin Foster can work his way through as well. I think he did just come down pit road also. So the hometown driver from Houston, Texas. Could he lead only one lap towards his goal tonight? And could it be the last? We will find out. But right now, Brett Guzik will lead the field to green for six more laps at Texas. Pace truck is off, and we are going green. Brett Guzik jumping the 85 truck of Cody Welch is going to be to his outside. A fairly nice jump from Brett Guzik. Cody Welch should be able to slot in fairly nicely, but side by side, it's going to be Jonathan Platt and Michael Ramos up to his outside. Not even anymore, though. It's really Michael Ramos and the two of Nick Nickerson side by side with six laps to go on the back straightaway. Down to the bottom goes the 85 of Cody Welch. Gets it done on the entry to turn number three. Can he hold it on the bottom line? How are the tires in that 85 truck? They are good enough for now. 85 of Cody Welch up to the point. Side by side coming to the line here for five to go. You know, it'll be Guzik leading at the line. Welch to the bottom. Jonathan Platt waiting to go with him. Nick Nickerson just cutting in front of the 64. Ricky Hart. Michael Ramos falling back a little bit in the 27. But Eddie Haggy back in the conversation after I forgot. I think it was an earlier wreck that, uh, that put him back in the field a little bit. But he has since recovered and finds himself back in contention for the top five, maybe even a podium. But right now, the 85 of Cody Welch looking for his first win of the season after three last year in his runner-up attempt at the championship. And he is your race leader with four laps to go as oh, Platt. Oh, the 94 flying in the air on the front straightaway. Holy cow, the 94 going to space. Hunter Henry, I know uh, I know we're nearby Houston, Texas, but that was like a Houston, we have a problem situation there. Holy cow, look at the damage to the 94 truck. In the air was right, Evan. I don't know if you got a better view of that than I did, but what in the world just happened? I... I saw contact between a couple of guys and all of a sudden the 94 of Hunter Henry turns into the Saturn V rocket flying up into the air. The 88, a little bit of contact there. They both get turned <laughs> and the 94 goes flying. You know, iRacing is a simulator at the end of the day. And we, we on iRacing here and, and anybody in the community, we like to think that it replicates real life racing as best as it possibly can. But that may have been the most arcadey thing I've ever seen on iRacing. Let's get a view of that one more time. Battling with Benny Hogan is the 94 truck. Uh, I want to see actually how they got into the wall in the first place. Oh, the 88 truck just gets a little bit too uh, too tight to the back bumper there. Pushes him a little bit too high there on the exit of turn four. And, uh, well, there you go. Another replay of the 94 truck's journey there. I uh, I really hope this isn't too jarring. And I certainly hope it's, uh, you know, YouTube safe. But uh, let's go on board with the 94 truck at Hunter Henry here. See what... Uh, what you would have seen from his perspective had this been a real wreck. Oh my. <laughs> and he's back. And uh, important to note, the truck also did not cave at all. The funny part is, okay, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty bad. That's a, that's a pretty damaged 94 race truck. But, uh, you know, I almost wonder if he, uh, if he hadn't... Um, if he hadn't landed upside down there for a brief moment, I wonder if he could have driven that back to the pits. Because... Uh, Surprisingly little damage there when he bounced off the ground in the 94, but uh, wow, what could have been a very, very clean, very fun final four laps of green to the finish now becomes a green-white checkered there with that final caution, or I guess presumably final caution, and uh, man, you know, there was some shuffling there in that last little battle in that final stint here before the uh, green-white checker finish, but uh, Michael Ramos shuffled back a little bit, Eddie Haggy as well, but Kale Zook has moved up a couple spots, 
and so is Brandon Jackson. I think your pick, Evan. I know we didn't make official picks yet, so this can be a good opportunity to do so. But uh, I, I think the 99 truck is uh, is just as good a chance as anybody, even Cody Welsh leading up front. Yeah, I feel like he does have a good chance. But, you know, he started that last restart back in 15th position. He was only only really able to work his way up to 9th. With less laps, I don't think he can work his way up to the lead that quickly unless there's problems from these other guys up in front of him. Cody Welch is a great pick up front, but if, if I were to make a pick right now, I would have to say it'd be Brett Guzik sitting right there in third position. Hopefully this doesn't jinx him or anything, but I think the 04 truck is in a really good spot on a green-white checkered here. I believe it should be a green-white checkered. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... I think the 04 truck should be in a really good spot to maybe drive it to victory lane. If I had to have a pick, that that'd be mine. What do you think, Marshall? You know, I'm uh, I'm going to give it to him. I, I know it's tough to lead here at Texas. I know it's tough to uh, to hold on in very short stints here with how much you can just send it to the bottom line. But uh, provided Jonathan Platt doesn't uh, doesn't do the old bump and run for the win, which I don't think I've ever seen in this series, it could be potentially a first. But uh, provided that doesn't happen. I'm going to give it to Cody Welch. I, you know, I think he's got as good of a shot as anybody. He's he's just been itching for a win for such a long time. He's very comfortable in the points, but you know, he, he's always going to know there's people watching him at home. He's he's one of the best supported drivers in the series, and uh, he's always great here at the mile and a half. He's great everywhere, but he's particularly pretty great here. So uh, let's uh, let's look. We got a camera. We got a Skype camera for uh, Mr. Cody Welch there. So there is the face of the driver of your current race leader, and he is only two laps away from potentially picking up his first race win of the season. I don't know what he's doing there. If he's taking a drink, I couldn't tell what that was. But uh, he's got racing gloves on, and uh, racing gloves to me mean uh, mean destiny. I mean, they mean effort and they mean purpose. So, Cody Welch, the 85 truck, is my pick for the win. But feel free to put in the chat with two laps to go as we get ready to go to green. Who do you think is going to take away the 12th race win of the season? Is it going to be Cody Welch, Brandon Jackson, Brett Guzik, or somebody we haven't talked about at all? Yeah, Welch definitely has the opportunity to do it, but you know. We've, we've seen here so many times how difficult it is to lead laps. It's just so easy for guys to send it on in under you. But we're going to have to find out. All these guys have to get a good restart here. And you know what? This might not even be the final restart of the night. You never know. But either way, the pace truck is coming off the track. The 85 of Cody Welch looking to get a good jump. And he does. The 85 with a really big jump as they're going to go down into turn one, the 04 of Brett Guzik and the 43 of Jonathan Platt are going to be side by side. A massive jump. You can see just how clear he is of any truck in behind, but the real battle is in behind. Brett Guzik just cutting in front of Jonathan Platt going side by side with Ricky Hart. That's going to effectively be the battle for the final podium spot. Hart to the inside of Guzik. The 64 truck looking for win number two on the season. He gets up the inside, getting a bit of help from Nick Nickerson. So two rows forming up here with one lap to go. No caution, no caution. We will not have another green-white checkered. One lap to go here at Texas. Cody Welch leads by about two car lengths, but Ricky Hart is coming up on him quick. Can the 64 truck get the bumper to him? Platt is around. Sideways. Platt into the outside wall off a two. Potential contender for the win is now out of it. Hart's going to go up to the top side. Final time through three and four. Welch still leads by a, by a car length. The 64 slotting back in behind. Is this the one? The 85 truck gets turned, goes, goes in the wall. Rex, the two Rex. It's going to be the 64 of Ricky Hart Jr. There it is. First in series history. As long as I've been here, we see a bump and run for the win, whether intentional or not. Ricky Hart. There is going to be some controversy there, but the 64... Gets it done at Texas out of nowhere in the final couple laps. We didn't, neither of us talked about him, was just kind of sitting there in the top five. And he is your race winner just like that. Oh boy, what a finish at Texas. A crazy finish there. I don't, I don't think that is exactly what Ricky meant to do. Yeah, Ricky Hart coming across and apologizing over the radio. I don't, I don't think he really meant to wreck him, just tried to move him out of the way, but... That's what happens, and you know what? The last lap, you got to do what you got to do to try and win the race. Unfortunately, the 85 truck going to be bringing home a wrecked number 85. Oh, what a moment here. Kevin Foster is going to push him across the line, car style. What a move. Class act there by the aid of uh, Kevin Foster. No, no power in the 85 truck. Can't get it back to the line, but that is a beautiful moment there. Kevin Foster pushes Cody Welch across the line. Cody will finish the race as classified in 16th. 
Not perfect, not the win he was so close to, two corners away from, but it is points. So, honestly, like, he, he wouldn't have finished in 16th without that. So that is a class move there by Kevin Foster, and uh, those are two guys who I know tonight didn't turn out the way they would have hoped, but they'll be battling for the playoffs there for sure, and uh, wow, nice move by Kevin Foster, and, and well-deserved. Cody Welsh, man, I feel so bad for him. What the heck what just went by the screen, but, uh, but Ricky Hart, your race winner at most, or not most sport, at uh, Texas Motor Speedway. Got Canada on the mind, I see. I do indeed. <laughs> there we go. Second win of the season. Ricky Hart gets his victory donuts done. Congratulations. And, uh, I, I mean, heartbreak, of course, for 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 Cody Welch. I mean, it, you can't undersell sell it. Um, especially, you know, the move being accidental, it, uh, it makes it that little bit better. You know, you never want to see one of those late moves that is just turning somebody who's well-deserving it for the win. But, uh... Yeah, that was uh, kind of an unintentional bump and run. Whether it was, uh, yeah, whether whether it happened or not, it was uh, it was unintentional. So I'll give uh, Ricky Hart the benefit of the doubt. He's a longtime veteran of the series. He's a good guy. It was just uh, kind of heat of the moment again, Evan. When you're running at such high speeds and such you know high intensity races, especially on the final lap, unfortunately stuff like that, little miscalculations are just going to happen. And and sometimes the guy who causes it isn't going to be the one that takes the uh, takes the damage out of it. Yeah, and I mean, in my opinion, I, I think Ricky meant to move him. He meant to get the bumper to him, which is what you've got to do when you're in second place. Racing for the win, you got to try and get your bumper on the guy, but just, I don't know if it was possibly, I don't know if it was just eye racing or, or what, but a crazy, it was almost crazy the way he jumped into the wall. Maybe maybe not, maybe I just saw it in the background and, and missed it, but... It, I, I, I don't think Ricky meant to wreck him. He just meant to move him a little bit. And un unfortunately, it ended the night for the 85 about a lap too early. Well, speaking of the Cars reference I just made a moment ago, there's kind of an homage to the uh, moment from Cars at the very beginning where the uh, three championship contenders for the Piston Cup go three wide across the line. So we're going to park like this is beautiful. Good job, gentlemen. Wow. Like, they are team broadcast, apparently, trying to make this look as good as possible. And... Uh, well, the way we're doing things lately on the broadcast, we do the winner's interview right after the race, and for good reason, because we got to talk to Ricky Hart nice and fresh here at the start of the interviews about that crazy race we just witnessed. What a finish, and uh, we'll see if he's uh, here on Skype. And Oh, man, I can I can see Cody Welsh. The guy just looks devastated. Man, do I feel bad for him. Oh, Ricky's getting up and walking away. So, okay, well, we have a moment. Uh, just I want to make sure that uh, Ricky Hart is back before we go to your interview cam. So... Uh, we don't usually do this, but uh, let's take a quick moment and do the uh, re the replay of that final lap there, and then we'll come back to this moment and uh, and get your first interview done. But, uh, I mean, Evan, let's walk through this. What a final lap here. So here is the initial contact. Jonathan Platt gets turned by, I think that was Michael Ramos, who came across for second. I haven't even mentioned that yet. Michael Ramos, what a finish. So we'll go on board with him through the final couple of corners. He gets into Jonathan Platt there in the final time through one and two. And then this was the moment Ricky just squaring up the back end of the 85, tries to push him a little bit high to get the move done. And just like that, like a spinning top goes around and the two truck and Nickerson bounces off the outside wall, gets clobbered by a couple trucks, but crosses the line in six. So we'll, we'll show you all that one more time because I, I can't really comprehend any of what just happened. But uh, again, what a classic finish here at Texas. I've been loving this season of the Bandit Racing League. Yeah, watching from Ramos's perspective, you could see it was almost like the seas just cleared for him and all of a sudden what looked like it was going to be a fourth place finish turned into a second when you see the 85 go around and, and take out the two. And thankfully, Ramos, the hole was right in front of him. All he had to do was, was stay head on and he was able to get through there. You know, I... Uh, again, we, we do the uh, the, the post-race results now after the interviews, but uh, stick around for that because there are going to be some absolute surprises here in this order. Not only did Michael Ramos find his way to second in the final results, Brett Guzik gets himself a podium. Eddie Haggy is in fourth, comes home um, just two spots behind his qualifying spot, but overall this was great tonight at Texas. This seems to be a very comfortable track for him. And Jason Greenwell, the pompous man himself in the 83, comes across for a top five as well, so... Congrats to all these gentlemen. What a race tonight. And uh, Ricky's still not on camera. He uh, appears to be off from his chair. So when, we, when he comes back, we'll start the first interview of the night. But uh, for now, we are going to go over your final results here tonight at Texas. And, uh, oh, man, I can't wait to go through them. What a race. What a finish. And uh, 
Well, for starters, your race winner tonight, Ricky Hart Jr., the 64 truck, picking up his second win of the season, becomes the third driver to do so after Brandon Jackson and Nick Nickerson. And coming home second, Michael Ramos, just a couple seconds behind, well, a couple really tenths of seconds there, not too far back. Had that final crash happened any different, had the 64 gotten involved, Michael Ramos could be picking up his first win of the season. But instead, it's Hart, then Ramos, then Guzik, another podium. Then Eddie Haggy comes home in fourth, Jason Greenwell in fifth, Nick Nickerson in sixth. Again, remember, he wrecked there at the very end. Could have potentially found himself getting a podium there off of turn three and four. Again, had that wreck not happened, but unfortunately it did. So he will find himself in sixth instead. Then it's Brandon Jackson in seventh. And then it's, uh, oh, uh, my my telemetry shows up noticeably different than the final results here. So I am instead going to choose to go off of the final results they're posting here because they appear to be different and I'm going to trust these more. So it'll be, uh, yeah, Brandon Jackson in sixth then. Then it's Christopher Ferrara in seventh. Nick Nickerson in eighth. Victor Weaver, great run for him, comes home in ninth, 16 spots up from 25th where he qualified. And then it's Anthony Catano in the 79, I believe a season best performance for the 79 truck, finishes in the top 10. 11th position is going to be the 10 truck of Matt Crockett, the special paint scheme tonight. And you know, guys, when they sponsor a race, they tend to do well. And Matt Crockett doing fairly well. Almost able to crack that top 10, coming home in 11th. Behind him is going to be Gary Wright in the 6th truck in 12th. A great finish from him. Then Bill Harkins in 13th, followed by Kevin Foster in 14th. Cody Welch, the first driver, one lap down in 15th, unfortunately. So close to a win, but 15th isn't too bad. 16th, also one lap down, is going to be John Graham, followed by Jonathan Platt, Kale Zook, Connor Zook, and Peter Murphy in 20th position. Yeah, fun to see the two Zooks finishing side by side. Again, Connor was tonight's profile driver. But there we go, starting the 21s, Ashley Molyneux. Such a shame that the 45 truck doesn't find herself way further up in the field tonight. Led a whole bunch of laps, was looking dominant, making a return tonight. And in the end, just kind of eye racing happened. You know, the Bandit Racing League happened. And uh, yeah, finds herself quite a ways back. And uh, then got involved in a wreck and still manages to come home, you know, about halfway through the field. So... You know, she's just looking for wins at this point. Unfortunately, isn't eligible for the championship, but uh, definitely showed flashes of the, of the ability she's had in the past, and uh, I can't wait to see next week if she makes it back to Las Vegas, what she can do there in a very similar racetrack. The 22nd is Steve Ulrich. David Lakey comes home in 23rd. Tony Hilbrand's in the 92 truck as well. Also had a great run for himself. Another guy that, unfortunately, just a casualty of all that late race chaos, but shout out to him. A great race overall. Then it's Benny Hogan coming home in 25th. Hunter Henry, who was doing well as well in the 94 truck. He'll finish in 26th. Nolan Gross in 27th, Terry Condis in 28th, Curtis Yancey uh, oh, oh, was involved in that late wreck there, that fifth caution of the race, and uh, got involved in that wreck with, who was that? It was David Lakey, so he finds himself in a, uh, well, very undeserved 29th, should have been, again, a, a way up through the field much further than that, but he'll come home in 29th, and it's Trey Ellis in 30th, and I'll uh, just round it off because we only got four more guys. Coconalis comes home in 31st, Connor Sawyer in 32nd, Jason Romy in the 08 truck in 33rd, and Alan Castle will round off tonight's grid in the Adventures with Purpose 100 at Texas Motor Speedway. What a race, what a performance by all the drivers, but particularly our race winner. Let's go to him in the broadcast booth for the first interview of the night with your race winner, Mr. Ricky Hart. We'll pull him in in just a moment. There we go. There is your race winner, Mr. Ricky Hart Jr. He's on his phone, but we will pull him into the broadcast booth and get your first interview of the night with the 64 truck, getting his second win of the season here at Texas Motor Speedway. Hey, Ricky, it's Marshall up in the broadcast booth. You got a copy? Hey, Marshall, I got you. Welcome. Second time winner this season. It, it's, uh, it was a crazy race from start to finish. You know, we talked about it a couple times that you know, with, with how quick the racing was tonight, you could run almost flat out around the corners. There was going to be chaos. There was going to be high adrenaline racing. And I know both from the chat and right after the race, you just, unfortunately, the way that one ended, you didn't seem too happy about it. But you were the race winner in the end. Just talk us through that finish there and, and what went wrong. Um, well, I was on fresher tires. Uh, I came in at lap 80. A lot of those other guys came in at, uh, I think, 72, 73, 74, somewhere right around there. So I was like, okay, I got this. The only other one on tires as fresh as me was Eddie. Um, Nick decided to stay out. He was quick on that first 
that first go around at, at lap 90. And I was really hoping that that was going to go green because I was like, okay, cool. I'm just going to pace myself. I'm going to get up to the front and I'm going to wear them down as the tires wear down. Um, then we got to the green right checkered and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I got to put it all on the line. I've been, you know, being told for the last two seasons, I got to be more aggressive, be more aggressive. So I was like, when I get to somebody, I'm just, I'm sticking to the bottom. You can't make the pass on the outside here. Um, outside line just wasn't working. So, you know, uh, I got a great restart, uh, lap 90. I didn't get a good restart. Nick got in front of me. He was able to come down this one. I was able to, to stay there right there with him. Uh, he wasn't able to come down. John was left hanging on the outside as well. So I was able to get around him. Um, and then I just had the two cars in front of me, um, you know, coming on the back stretch, I think, uh, coming or, or during the white flag, I had Brett and he got ready to block me going in the three. And I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not going to lift. Like it's going to end bad for both of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of called his bluff. He moved back up and then I just saw a clear shot to the leader. And I was like, okay, I'm on better tires. We're going to hit this bump. There's a bump, you know, coming kind of out of three and going into four, kind of right there in the middle. And I was like, if I can get him, hit that just right, come up just a little bit, I could sneak under him. And I thought we were going to have a drag race to the finish line. I was like, here we go. It's going to be a drag race. Um, he did just that. He hit that bump. He came up just a little tiny bit. And then I feel like I either, I caught it way too close where he came down a little bit. I'm not sure. I didn't watch a replay yet, but you know, we touched and he went up into the wall and yeah, I got, I got to give it, I, I, Cody couldn't have done anything different and we're both racing for the win. I feel like I couldn't do anything different too. Like that was, that was the only line I had and it was the only line he, he had, like he couldn't move up a little bit to, to kind of get off of me right there. And cause if he had, he would have had to have let off the gas to stay off the wall and we would have never had that drag race. So it was just close, hard racing in my eyes and I, I'm real thankful for the win. I really wanted this one. You know, I, I felt good about it all week, but not the way I wanted to earn it. I, you never want to put somebody into the wall, even if it's coming for the win. At least I don't. That's that's not the way I race. It's never been the way I race. So. Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. In, in no way do, do I would I put that on you. Again, like I was talking about, you know, tonight at Texas, it was just all the racing was so close. Guys could run so quick on that bottom line that, there was just so much, you know, shuffling around and uh, and such, you know, high intensity moment to moment action that, you know, I think there was really nothing else you were going to do there. And uh, yeah, you saw the bit of the bobble. Uh, we just showed the replay a moment ago, but you saw the bit of the bobble there from um, Cody Welch regardless. And uh, yeah, it's unfortunately, Texas, especially the older version, I know has some slight imperfections to the new surface. So you got to wonder if we ran the uh, if the current te the current Texas, if that would have happened at all. But uh, yeah, overall, Ricky, you just you ran a great race from start to finish. And I think there were so many different race leaders that it wasn't going to be clear who was going to have the edge at the end there. And you just kind of walked us through the finish. But, you know, in terms of a finish here at a, at a track like Texas, where that bottom line is so dominant, and it felt like everybody on the top just, once they lost a spot, they just shuffled all the way back. How do you as a driver ensure that you're always in that left lane going forwards and you never find yourself on the right? Uh, uh, to be honest, it's a lot more take than it is give. Um, early in the race, I was, I was given a lot. You know, I was, I was, I was up there fourth place, fifth place. You get stuck on the outside and you just got to be patient. I mean, you got to know that it's not just going to be that one car that's going to roll under you unless you got that gap behind you. It's going to be that, that car. It's going to be the car behind him. It's good. It's might possibly be the third car behind that person. And you just got to be patient. You got to wait your turn, fall back in line. And you know, while you're up there on the top, save your tires. Don't try to run quicker than the guy that's running below you. Bottom's a better line save the tires and you know hope for a long green flag run or if anything hope that a caution comes out and you can get back up there and, and then s just start battling for the inside um it, it's it's really hard once you lose the inside if somebody has a run coming out of one of the turns and they get down there you can throw the block but i mean it's so early in a race you just can't do it you can put yourself in a position but you risk throwing your race away his race away her race away and, uh, you know, you don't, you really don't know who, who else. So you get to the outside, you be patient. You just hope for the bottom every chance you get. Sometimes you get a little unlucky and, and you lose it and you fall back. You just got to keep battling. 
and battle you you did tonight for sure it was it was a busy race for everybody but you were kind of just always somebody on the tip of our tongue somebody involved in the pack but yeah you talked about you know trying kind of changing your strategy up changing your approach a little bit you're always a, typically a very patient guy that's why you're so great at races like atlanta that are you know a lot about tire strategy or one of the best conservation guys in the series but yeah you talked about that different mindset that different approach tonight you know guys telling you you got to be that little bit more aggressive and it was what essentially got you the win tonight that move there at the end if you just kind of backed off and let the corner go to cody it was going to be over. So, you know, do you think that's something that is going to pay off? You think you're going to keep that going forward? And do you think that strategy still works as well in the playoff format you're going into this season? Yeah, I think um, with the group of guys that we have racing with us this season, um, there's, you really can't not be aggressive. I mean, early in the races, yeah, let them by. Build that rapport with other drivers if you can. But, I mean, you got to go for the win, especially getting ready to go into the playoffs. I mean, a win and you're in. You, you got to go for it. Um, it. It's it's this whole season has become more and more difficult to stay in the top five. It's become more and more difficult to to stay in the top ten, even um, even some races the top fifteen. And you know that's a that's a tribute to these guys racing week after week after week, good clean hard racing, and everybody's just up in their game and they're doing a really good job. So yeah, I mean I can't back down. Um, you know, from here on out, going to the end of the season. Um, Nick said last week <laughs> in his interview, when I missed it, he called out who he thought was going to be the final four, and I kind of gave him crap. I was like, "Yeah, Yo, you didn't, you didn't pick me for the final four, and that got me lit for this race. That's why I re- really wanted this win, and I think that's that might be one of the reasons that I kept that, you know, kept it pinned to the floor, and I just had to go for it. And, yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing that for the rest of the season. Hopefully – you know what if cody comes in next week and he gives a pin to the floor and you know rolls are reversed kudos to him i'm I'm not even gonna bat an eye i'll be like you know what i deserve that and uh you know if it's anybody else we all got to go for it there at the end so yeah no 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 doubt man I, again i i think that you know watching it back i think you know, Cody knows it wasn't intentional. I know all of you guys that are up front, some of you longtime veterans, series champions, guys that are top of the order week in, week out. I know the respect is, is definitely there between you all. So I'm I'm sure there's not going to be any hard feelings uh, not necessarily about it. It's going to be heartbreaking, I'm sure. But, uh, but you know, you come across tonight and uh, and, and you, you get your second win of the season, man. And, uh, yeah, you know, that, that, that uh, question last week to Nick kind of got you fired up. You know, that's why as a technical journalist, you got to ask questions like that because it's interesting. You got to ask the hard what, ones. Uh, exactly. And, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to give you an opportunity before we, uh, well, maybe we can wrap this into your uh, your final thoughts and some shout outs for sponsors, friends and family, if you want. But uh, also, you know, just for fun, just to kind of, you know, kick the can down the road. Uh, you want to give me your uh, four picks if you had to make a prediction for the uh, championship <laughs> four this season? Uh, my four picks are going to be Nick for sure. It's going to be Cody. <laughs> and ooh, I, I got to go with. Oh, man, uh, who's the latest one? I'm going with Cody because I think I just lit a fire under that man's ass. I, I think <laughs> he's going to be up on that wheel for the rest of the season <laughs> trying to get in there. Um, I don't know. Kevin Foster's been pretty strong. Brett, I, I don't even know who to give the last spot to. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be interesting when we get there, though. It's going to be a tough, tough squad. Well, yourself, Cody, and uh, and Nick, that uh, seems very familiar to something. That's almost borderline last season's top four exactly. So clearly the uh, the switch from Xfinity to Trucks isn't uh, making enough of a difference that the top guys are, are any different. But we have so many in this series that I think it's uh, it's entirely a toss-up this year. So the fact that, Ricky, you've now come away with two wins just just really speaks to, uh, to everything you do, your abilities, and uh, that new strategy is working for you, man. So keep it going. It's fun to watch. And... Uh, you know how this works, man. You've been here so many times, whether it was two seasons ago, last year you got a win, and uh, now you're at two on the season. So if you have any shout-outs you want to give to friends and family, any sponsors you want to mention, or whatever you want to talk about, now's your time to do so. Yeah, uh, Materia Tattoo, and as always, my family, uh, my wife Sam, daughter Alba, son Wade, um, you know, all my friends that are watching at home, if they're still watching. <laughs> uh, all these guys tonight that, that I race with, you know, week in, week out, everybody that puts the show on, Marshall, Evan, everybody. Um, yeah, everybody does a great job, and I, I really enjoy this. I, I love doing this on Wednesday night, and I look forward to keep doing it. So thank you to, to everybody that's a part of this. Awesome. Thank you, Ricky. You're a class act, man. You're such a great driver, and you've done it, man. Two in a row. Well, two in a row, but two in the season, man. 
keep it going. You know, Nick Nick is sitting up up there pretty with uh, with his three wins. So now we got somebody throwing his hat in the ring. If we make that a tie with the last two champions, there'd uh, there'd be yet another storyline and and a season packed full of them. So awesome! Congratulations, Ricky. Go take some time, celebrate, come back out next week at Las Vegas. Very similar track, and uh, see what you can do for us, man. Thank you, Marshall. You awesome. have a good night, and I'll uh, see everybody next week. Awesome. See you then. And there you go. Your first interview of the night tonight with race winner Ricky. The big sigh there. You can tell this uh, this would have taken quite a bit out of him, as the great races, the difficult races often do. So there you go. Your first interview of the night is done. And uh, now we're on to the second interview of the night with a guy that really found himself in the uh, second spot very late in tonight's event. Started in the 11th spot and uh, moved his way all the way up to second. It is a driver we've seen do very well at the intermediates in the past. And, uh, well, now he, he is tonight's second interview. Mr. Michael Ramos in the 27 track. Let's pull him in the, into, the, uh, into the booth in just a moment. Hey, Michael. This is Evan in the broadcast booth. You got a copy? Hey, what's going on, Evan? Hey, not much. You had a... So, go, going across your season, first of all, it, I feel like it's been a while since I've seen your name. Maybe, maybe it hasn't, but I feel like it has. You had an eighth at Bristol, a sixth at Knoxville, a seventh at Milwaukee, and a second tonight. So, a great job, but first of all, let's just talk about what happened on that last run and how you got that second place finish. Just tell me what happened from your perspective. Oh, man. I don't know. That last lap was pretty crazy. So, I know going across the line in the start of the, the lap, we we saw the gap underneath uh, Jonathan Platt, so we, we definitely got our nose in there. And uh, th I think we were three wide. And uh, just the truck slid up a little bit and ended up getting into Platt. So definitely sorry about that. Um, continuing the run, uh, we, we definitely saw how aggressive everybody was up in the top three um, as we went into three and four. And uh, as soon as it, it looked like Nick and Cody kind of got into it and the, the seas just parted, right in the the opportune time for me to squeeze right in the middle and uh kind of come in with that second so it was definitely a crazy lap yeah you know what the, it it worked out perfectly for you just left you the hole right down the middle but it, it wasn't it wasn't all luck you had a great job to get that second place finish but let's talk about moving forward a little bit so right now you are just barely out of the playoffs on points you're 20 points out right now and we've got Vegas, Phoenix, and Auto Club before the playoffs start. That's what the tracks are the next three weeks. So how do you feel about those three tracks? Do you think you can point your way into the playoffs, or are you just going to try and go out there, go in strong, get a win, and knock it out that way? Uh, well, I know Vegas is a track that we're strong at. Um, but, you know, you know how the points work, Evan. It also depends on how good everybody around you does. So, you know, Vegas isn't – too terrible of a track, uh, especially if you can save the tires. And then uh, going into Phoenix and what was it, Auto Club, uh, we should be strong. So we'll we'll see. You know, at the same time, like I am active duty and I'm trying to do my master's degree at the same time right now. So that's usually what pulls me out of races. Some you know every once in a while. Yeah, I, I definitely understand. I I can imagine that that is not easy, not easy at all. So good luck to you. And you know what. Thank you for your service, but we'll try and wrap this up. So you, you know what the time is. It's your time to say whatever you want to do. Shout out to whoever you want to do. It's your time to take over the broadcast. I just want to do a shout out to everybody that we race with and to you and, and uh, Marshall. Um, you know, something we look forward to every Wednesday. And, uh, you know, it's always great to get on here and just race with a bunch of great guys. And, and Ashley, <laughs> I think she's the one girl. Um, but it's, it's always a blast. And it's something I look forward to every Wednesday to kind of, you know, just get away from work, get away from school and, and have a little bit of fun. So, um, but other than that, like, just want to thank you guys for an awesome broadcast and appreciate you guys pulling me in. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And and again, I, I will go ahead and re reiterate that. Thank you to all these drivers that that come out here and, and give us something fun to watch, something fun to broadcast. So good luck next the next three weeks, really good luck trying to get into the playoffs. I definitely believe in you. Hopefully you can make the races because I think I think if you make the races you can do it. You're definitely a strong enough driver, but but good luck to you not only in the races, but in the course of everything you're doing because it sounds like you're a fairly busy guy yeah all right man i appreciate it we'll see what we can do sounds good
Yeah, I've got you. Hey, well, I just realized my mic was off there for a moment, so here is your third place finisher, everybody, Mr. Brett Guzik. He is uh, he is back here. I believe this is the going on like maybe three weeks in a row. You've, you've been rattling off the podium here these last couple weeks, and uh, just a great season for you overall. But tonight, it's the first question for the first two guys we interviewed, and it's got to be the first question for you. Just what was your perspective there on those last couple laps of that race, and particularly the final lap? Is it just looked like every driver was parting the Red Sea in front of every other driver? Yeah, I was just trying to keep my nose clean most of the race. Uh, I made a few bold moves, but I wouldn't say I did anything I, I felt like I wasn't comfortable with. Um, just, well, looks like we're uh, full send on the full send racing <laughs> network here. Um, but yeah, um, just trying to uh, make the right moves and play the right strategy and come out of here with a podium. I didn't know if I could probably win that one, but um, I tried whatever I could to... Uh, try and pull it off yeah and it, it was it was looking like it was going to be tough to even find yourself anywhere near the podium not not you specifically but any driver tonight just because it was it looked like a pretty comfortable track to run i heard in practice that everybody was confident it was going to be foot to the floor for quite a ways into the tire stint so in your experience did you find that was kind of how it worked and do these races that are kind of just more about battling around dicing around traffic rather than kind of individual lap um you know strategy and, and throttle control does that play well to your skills and you know las vegas somewhat similar next week are you feeling good about that sort of race as well uh sometimes i feel like i do have um a bit of a feel for going long on going long on long runs uh trying to preserve the tires and just trying not to slip the tires i feel like i do pretty well at that um maybe not as well tonight i think i was just not as i uh, didn't come to grips with this track as well as some other tracks i think um i would say i was okay in the beginning of the runs uh, i fell off a little bit in the middle and then i would come back a little bit at the end but i wouldn't say i really had it throughout like the whole run or anything so i think going forward um i think las vegas is a decent track for me for saving tires and kind of preserving the race but uh we won't know until we you know get down to it now, I'm curious to ask because you, uh, well, you've already punched yourself into the playoffs. We know that for a fact with your win earlier this season. Um, and, you know, thinking about the uh, the structure of the playoffs and how you really need to be, you know, adding up points each and every race because it's not a win in your end system. So when it comes to being consistent and just racking up positions, we've seen that from you all season. You've got so many podiums in the bag, you know, so many top fives, top tens. Do you think the format of the playoff structure is going to work well for you? And do you think that you know, do, do you think anybody's driving different in the regular season than they are in the playoffs? Or can you kind of just take what's working well for you here in the regular season and assume it's going to work for you well when we get to uh, the, the first race after Auto Club, I think New Hampshire? Yeah, I, I think I I kind of have the feel of what the, the playoff structure will kind of look like, how each race will kind of, kind of flow, uh, how the races will play out a little bit. Um, I think in previous seasons, I didn't. I had an idea of what I wanted to happen throughout a race, and I realistically, I don't think that uh, what I wanted to happen would ever play out. So I kind of had to kind of change it up a little bit and just try and uh, be a little more methodical and just try and work my way and put myself in position instead of just trying to outright, um, you know, just try and dominate the race or anything like that. Yeah, of course, what you what you plan to happen is often very different than what really happens here on iRacing or in the Bandit Racing League as a whole. So, you know, you're somebody who I've, I've called in the past very calculated, very prepared, and you've proven that this season, and now it's starting to work for you. It's great to see the uh, the Brett Guzik we've all known was in there, we've all expected to show up, and now you're just, you're one of the guys, or I think you're one of the premier finishers really in the last 10 races of this season as, as of late. So you're rattling them off now. You get another podium tonight in a very tricky race at Texas and a great finish, and well, I, I know we're going to see you again soon, so we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. But, you know, now's your time. You wanted to uh, do any shout-outs, you want to talk about sponsors, friends and family, whatever it may be, you know the, you know the deal, now's your time. Yeah, I'd just like to thank uh, Chris Ferrer for hitting me here. Um, <laughs> like to th like to thank uh, all the uh, people watching tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. You guys are kind of what uh, keeps a lot of us going with the YouTube channel and you know, creating this exposure for us and giving us something to look forward to every week. And uh, Marshall and Evan, just for, you know, putting on this broadcast every week, doing a, a great job, um, trying to highlight us drivers and, you know, let us shine. 
and you know when you guys make fun races like this tonight it, it only feels criminal not to so thank you brett and uh for always making these races uh, fun to watch for always being such an active part up there towards the front of the field and for being such a clean solid driver it's always good to know that our, our top guys in the series who are going to be getting podiums wins week in and week out are such great guys so much respect we saw kevin foster push cody welsh across for the finish there for the win and uh I do just want to mention momentarily, it was dubbed in the chat, and I think it is uh, spot on. We've now seen uh, Cody Welch being considered the uh, the new Brett Guzik going forward in this series. He's kind of taken the mantle over from yourself. So, you know, take solace in knowing that uh, for, for a long time, your your bad luck was was kind of what we characterized you for, but now you're just getting great results. So that, that passes off to our next guy. So you're officially uh, past that phase, Brett, and I wish you the best of luck uh, as, as Cody takes over the mantle of unlucky driver in the series. Well, I'm glad to, you know get rid of that uh, that stigma but i think you're gonna see cody win one here soon so i think you won't be necessarily saying that too much longer no i i, I bet you're right i think you're i think you're darn right but uh you, you'll make it tough for him i know that so congratulations tonight brett another podium go away and uh, and get ready for las vegas and uh, try to come back next week at a fairly similar track and, uh, and do it all over again all right thanks guys and with that, your final interview of the night is complete with Mr. Brett Guzik, who's back. You know, yeah, we we were we were talking about it for a while. I mean, you know, that was kind of our uh, ongoing segment here on the broadcast called, you know, how often can we talk about Brett and, and what's going to go wrong this time? But uh, as of late, man, he's just been rattling him off. It's been a great season for Brett, and to see him get another podium and to see Ricky get another win, it feels like you know the things that weren't happening for a while. Those kind of cold streaks we went on. They're all coming to an end. Ricky's getting wins. Brett's getting, you know, great performances, including his win. I think we're into a new stage of the Bandit Racing League Season 9 season, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would definitely call it a new stage. And there's definitely certain guys that are getting hot, like Ricky Hart Jr. and Brett Guzik and maybe even Michael Ramos. We'll have to see how that plays out in the next couple of races. But if there's any time that you want to start racking off good finishes, it's right before the playoffs start and right as they right as they ramp up you know because now's the time where it really matters as long as you make it into those playoffs it doesn't matter how you raced in most of those races before everything from now on if was making it into the playoffs now it's just keeping that momentum up and trying to prepare as best you can for the playoffs in order to hopefully win the championship here soon that really is all you can hope for in this uh, in this series because uh, it, you know individual races are so tough. So you know hoping for a championship is sometimes just as realistic as hoping for an uh, individual race win. So there you go. Ricky Hart's having some fun on pit lane. He's driving down and uh, doing some sweet like you know kind of rolling forward burnouts. Those are always my favorite move. We've seen a couple of great ones this season, including from Nick last week. You saw it in the race recap. So Ricky's going to continue to celebrate. He's tonight's race winner at Texas, but. Uh, one more time before we go over your race sponsor one final time and shout out again the awesome cause of uh, Adventures with uh, a Purpose. And uh, important to mention, Bill Harkins mentioned it there in the chat, but uh, Bandit Racing League has officially, uh, they will donate $80. So we had 79 laps under green tonight. They're going to round that up to 80 and uh, we will donate to the, the awesome cause for Adventures with a Purpose for all the great things they do for both environmental protection and for uh, for, for some cause. I don't even know how to put it, but... Uh, you know, if you, if you go check out their YouTube channel, you check out some of their stuff, and you go out there and subscribe, you'll see some you'll see some great content that's really meaningful, that's impactful to families, and uh, and it's just such an awesome cause. So we're glad we can help. Again, that's Adventures with Purpose. They are tonight's race sponsor here at Texas, and uh, go check them out. Their link to their YouTube channel and their website is both in the description. And if you want to go donate yourself, um, yeah, they, they got a great button on their website. And again, the way that they do it through Venmo, you get a tax write off in the states, and uh, it's 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 awesome. It's just a great system, and. Uh, yeah, it's helping what they do, and what they do is a great thing. So, Adventures with Purpose, again, thank you so much to them. Hope you guys enjoy. I know you guys couldn't uh, actively, you know, be here for an interview or anything like that, but hopefully you would enjoy the uh, enjoy the exposure, and you guys certainly deserve it. So, thank you guys for being tonight's race sponsor. And, uh, well, finally, I guess we're just going to take another moment to, uh, we'll, we'll plug the uh, merch one more time. we got Bandit merch. Go check it out. we got some new stuff in the shop. Um, always be checking the website for new information. We update it every single week with race results. You know, get some pictures and stuff like that of the uh, most recent race, and we always keep the merch coming. So um, we had a question a little bit earlier, but are we going to get more, uh, you know, merch and, and stuff for specific drivers? Uh, right now, it's just Kevin Foster and Nick Nickerson, and I know a lot of the uh, issue is, you know, how much can we guarantee certain people will um, want certain merch for a certain driver? But if we know that there's a lot of interest for a certain driver, like, say, some of the particular fan favorites on the broadcast, well, I'm sure it'll be there sooner rather than later. Um, also, quickly, as we're just kind of going through everything here tonight, because it's uh, it's been... 
you know, one of those very, very big, very, you know, jam-packed races. Uh, also, do want to mention the uh, winner of last week's trivia was Carla Bivens, with the uh, mother of Mark Allen Bivens, successful racing series driver this season. He was at a great sophomore season for himself in the 76 truck. His mom was the winner last week of uh, of the Bandit Racing League trivia. She had seven of eight right, um, which was uh, two more than anybody else. Unfortunately, I, I really should in trivia in the future give you the answers before the end of the broadcast. But uh, yeah, she did go seven of eight. So incredible performance by you, Carla. Thank you for uh, for all your efforts, and I hope you enjoy your prize pack courtesy of Rogue Energy. But uh, one more time, Evan, we can just kind of go over things and wrap things up. And, uh, well, I want to give you your time because, uh, again, you, you made so many trucks for this week's race. It felt like half of, of every graphic I saw had some portion of Evan Wall Media either on a truck or you had made one. So, uh, yeah, you know, take a chance to kind of talk about the stuff you do and, and talk about uh, maybe any projects you got going on in the future and maybe any trucks you're thinking of designing or something like that. And just, uh, yeah, pull your stuff, man, because you deserve it. Yeah, well, I made a little while ago, I made the 99 truck for Brandon Jackson. I actually made his Xfinity car, converted that car over to his truck, and just recently I made a cup car of the same scheme. So if you go watch Brandon Jackson's Twitch streams, Street Boss 24, you'll see the cars that I've made. Also made the 13 truck for Chris Ferrara. I, I had his truck, um, the, the truck that he had before, if you guys remembered, it was a blue and black Hendrick Cars truck. I made that one, and then just recently, actually earlier today, I finished up a brand new truck for him. It's camo, National Guard on it. Really good looking truck for him. And then, of course, Matt Crockett, special truck. He reached out to me a little while ago to make an Adventures with Purpose truck. And so I did that, and he was actually nice enough to, to send me a frame picture of it. I unfortunately don't have it hanging up behind me, and I don't have my camera on, but maybe at some point I will have both of those things and I could show it to you. But. Yeah, so I made those three guys' trucks, and really, I haven't been working on too much, just just doing my job, haven't had the time to do any personal graphic designs too much, but the one that I did, um, you can find me on Instagram at Evan Wall Media. I recently made one. Uh, my roommate and I needed something to hang up in our apartment, and if you're any fan of college football, you know who Nick Saban is, and of course, being uh, from Alabama and a huge Alabama fan, I... I love Nick Saban, and um, so we we both we both came together of a design. I made up a poster, and it's probably the my favorite thing that I have ever made in Photoshop. So if you want to check that out, you can check it out over on my Instagram at Evan Wall Media or my Facebook Evan Wall Media. Hopefully, in the future, I'll have time to make make some more personal things. But but until then, if you want to see some of the stuff that I work on, you can look at the Alabama Athletics Facebook or Instagram. I don't make much that's on there, but I work on a couple little things on there. Or if you're driving through Tuscaloosa, you see a couple billboards. But main thing you can find me is Evan Wall Media on Instagram, Facebook, EvanWallMedia.com. Yeah, so check it out. Anything you need, any sort of graphic design, Photoshop, photography, videography, even including paint schemes. So just let me know if you need anything like that. Awesome. Thank you, Evan. And uh, yeah, thank you as always for, for doing the, all the graphics for this series, for co-commentating alongside me. It's always so much better when I got you uh, when I got you here with me. And uh, yeah, your, the link to your uh, website is always in the description. So if you ever want to go check out Evan's stuff, just go down there in the description. Basically, anything you could ever look for is down there. And uh, I do a little write-up before each race, too. So there's plenty down there. Go check it out before you watch. And uh, go check out some of those links after the race, including, again, Adventures with Purpose. Um, I'm going to take a, a quick moment. Um, I usually I do my shout-outs right at the end, but uh, we'll show you your final race results in just a moment before we head off the air. But uh, I want to give two shout-outs very quickly. Uh, first shout-out to, uh, well, the man himself, Cody Welch. I, I feel so bad for the guy, man. What a race start to finish. So, Cody, when you watch this back, I, I, like you know, r racing just kind of happened uh, the way it happened there at the end. But uh, you, you ran such a great race, man. And, and and knowing that you had three wins last season, you were the runner-up for the championship, and you've come so close this year. Uh, we, we call you the new Brett Guzik in the most loving way possible because we feel bad for you, man. Tonight was was going to be your night, but uh, we know you're going to come back next week. And again, just like Ricky said, I cannot wait to watch what Cody's going to look like these next few weeks. And we know he's got it in him. And I feel like once he gets that one win, we could see him rattle off as much as five to ten because the guy is just so talented. And I know he's got some great support. So thank you, Cody. Now you're my first uh, shout out tonight. Uh, the other one's my dad, uh, Marshall Crocker Sr. Just flip the J on the, my, my graphic there to the uh, to the S. Uh, my dad, he watches all these broadcasts and uh, and supports me in my real life racing endeavors as well. Um, I'm all, I'm always doing you know karting stuff on the weekend up here in lovely Canada, and uh, and he's always supportive of that with uh, 
even being up here in university, you got the sweet new dorm room. Also, I have a new camera. I don't know if you guys noticed. I probably look uh, much clearer today, which is hopefully an advantage, um, depending on the way I look right now. But uh, yeah, I want to thank him for, for helping, even though I'm a little ways from my local karting track. He uh, gets me out there every weekend, and he watches uh, all of these broadcasts, and uh, I know he enjoys the series so much. So he's a longtime supporter. Thank you to him. Thank you to my dad, Marshall Crocker Sr., and uh, and everybody else who watches this, as always. Thank you guys for watching and supporting the series. And I've just been loving this season. We've had so many great races that I get so pumped, you know, getting through classes, getting through assignments, and uh, I get this to look forward to. So it's awesome. Thank you, guys. We're going to do whatever we can to make it bigger and better going forward. Next week, we're out Las Vegas. So, you know, got uh, the high roller uh, capital of the world. So we'll see if the uh, racing action kind of mimics that sort of theme. But one more time, we will put up your final results here tonight at, uh, at Texas for the Adventures with Purpose 100. I just got to reset my graphic. And two more seconds. No, oh, that's starting grid. Whoops. This one. That's what we want. Presented by Perfect Shine Auto Spot. We are way off of where we should be. Back up to the front. Your race winner tonight. Ricky Hart Jr., Michael Ramos in second, Brett Guzik in third, Cody Welsh finishes in No, oh, that's the play out. That's the points. What am I doing? We do want the race results. It's late, folks, so that's why we're gonna head off. So Ricky Hart wins. Michael Ramos in second. Brett Guzik third. Eddie Haggy comes home for fourth. And shout out to both him and Jason Greenwell, who make their way into the top five and take home a great haul of points for themselves, heading into round 13. Lucky 13, actually, at Las Vegas. That works out great. I don't know if that was intentional, but we won't keep you much longer here. Here is the season schedule if you want to know what the next couple weeks look like and what exciting tracks you should expect before the end of the regular season. And with that, we are going to head off. On, on behalf of both myself, Evan Wall, all the drivers in the Bandit Racing League, season, uh, well, series coordinator and series founder Bill Harkins, Thank you to everybody for supporting, and if you go donate to Adventures of Purpose, we, we sincerely thank you because it's a great cause, and we were so happy to represent them tonight. So have a great rest of your week, everybody. We'll see you next week at Las Vegas, and uh, yeah, s stay safe out there because I know COVID is more of a thing up here in Canada, but uh, you know, everybody just keep doing well, and uh, our community will continue to, to thrive here in the Bandit Racing League. So have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you next week at Las Vegas. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. <laughs>